Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the sixth episode of the story, in which Naruto discovers a bracelet that allows him to wield the weapons and gear of legendary heroes while looking at the Forbidden Scroll. Naruto uses this power to become the ultimate ninja of the elemental nations. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Naruto, Sakura and Hinata had long since left the Hidden Leaf Village and were currently halfway towards their destination to meet the person who issued their mission and get the remaining half of the information that they had heard from Tsunade. At the moment, Naruto was leading the way while holding a map of the region and making sure that they hadn't gotten themselves lost. Then he looked up from the map and spoke to the girls. Sakurakan, Hinatakan. How we stop for a short break. There's a tea house a short distance from and it's been a while since we last ate, said Naruto rolling up the map and placing it in his ninja pouch. Sure Narutokun, I was feeling a bit hungry and I'm sure Hinata is feeling the same, said Sakura with Hinata nodding in affirmation. Soon enough the trio found the tea house and had seated themselves at a table while the lady owning the tea house attended to their orders. Naruto asked for sweet bean soup, for Sakura it was Kuzumochi and Hinata asked for Defukumochi. The lady complied with their requests and later brought food to which they ate happily and drank the tea that accompanied them. After this, it's straight to the land of tea for the mission, said Naruto as he took a sip of the green tea. I just hope that it won't be as dangerous as the last mission we had back at the land of waves, said Hinata. Don't worry Hinatakan, we trained very hard and I know that we can handle anything that comes our way. Like Deadpool Sensei told me all you need is your badass self and maximum effort, said Naruto with a foxy grin making the girls giggle at what he said. You must be confident to be saying those things, or is it that you're arrogant about your own strength, a voice spoke up next to them. They turned to see a boy a bit older than them with dark brown hair tied to a short ponytail like their friend Shikamaru and is wearing a short cloak while holding a straw hat in his hand. Naruto wasn't so happy with what the guy said to him and neither were the girls within his seal and sitting across the table. Watch it buddy. Don't go saying stuff you have no idea about or you'll be sorry you ever did, said Naruto with a frown. Apparently the guy ignored him and turned to the girls with a smile. Hey there, my name is Idate. What are two beautiful girls like you doing out here, said the guy now known as Idate. Sorry but we don't speak to disrespectful men, especially ones that insulted our fiancé, said Sakura who glaring at eye date along with Hinata which brought confusion upon the boy. Fiancé, asked eye date, then he felt a hand clamp on his shoulder and was slowly squeezing to the point of it almost being painful. He turned around and gulped in fear as he saw Naruto glaring at him while radiating a small amount of killing intent. You better quit with the flirting before I start with the hurting, said Naruto in a cold voice. Idate managed to gather his wits and spoke back, I was just kidding, you. Ninjas are all alike and if there's anything I can't stand it's a ninja. I'm outta here, then the boy turned and left with Naruto still glaring. Narakan, please calm down. The fool is gone, said Kurama. Naruto let out a sigh and sat down to drink his tea, then the lady appeared and dropped an pair of bills for the food much to their confusion. Excuse me, but why are you giving us two bills instead of one? asked Hinata curiously. Oh the young man who just left told me that you would be paying for the food that he ate, the lady replied. However this made the simmering anger within Naruto flare up but with more intensity and the girls were just as irritated even Hinata was scowling. First that guy flirts with Hinatakan and Sakurakan, and then he dines and dashes? Forget hurting, I'm maiming the guy. Hinata activated her Byakugan and was surprised as she spoke up, I found him, but he's very far from here and moving very quickly, what? Then we better get moving so that we can catch up to him. Naruto dropped the money on the table and took off with Sakura and Hinata who was directing them. After a bit of jumping through the trees, Hinata spoke up again saying that she located Idate and that he had tripped himself, making it easier to finally catch up and sure enough they landed in front of him. We finally found you, you have a lot of nerve dumping your bill on us and running off. 
Naruto strode forward and grabbed Aidate by the collar, pulling his face close, you got anything to say for yourself before I punch you to next Tuesday? Aidate was sweating profusely as the blonde was glaring at, 2 am sorry, I couldn't pay the bill cause all my money had been stolen and I had no other way, Narakan, he's lying. I can hear his heart beating like a drum, said Kurama. Naruto sneered, nice try pal, but I'm not falling for that kind of excuse, he reared his fist back and was ready to punch when they heard a thump and saw what looks to be a black jackknife with a fancy golden design. What is this doing here? said Sakura who was approaching the item to pick it up. Suddenly Idate broke off Naruto's grip much to his surprise due to his lack of strength in the hold and quickly scooped up the jackknife in his hands. Keep your hands off, this belongs to me, said Idate, then he reached into his leg warmers and pulled out a pair of objects which were making clanging sounds. Naratosama, that boy is holding what appears to be leg weights, said Chinami. Leg weights? Then that means, thought Naruto as he looked at Idate who was smirking. On your marks, get set, G.O., then he dropped the weights to the ground which resulted in a cloud of dust. Naruto channeled wind chakra to his hand and waved it to blow away the cloud and was shocked to see the guy taking off at high speed while leaving behind a trail of dust. What the? That guy just did a road runner skit, shouted Naruto, making everyone around him sweat drop. Now how are we? Going to catch up to him now, said Sakura. Naratosama, use the air treks, said Chinami urgently. Got it. Naruto raised his hand to reveal the bracelet as he channeled chakra into it and called out, tag mode. Ride the sky road, there was a flash light before it faded away to reveal Naruto wearing the air treks with Hinata and Sakura wearing them as well, let's go, the wheels on the air trek started spinning rapidly before he kicked off at high speed with Sakura and Hinata close behind. They were speeding along the road when Hinata spoke up, Narutokun, I've noticed that the boy we're pursuing is going in the direction of the land of tea, Naruto quirked an eyebrow in interest really? Then that makes things much more interesting, there he is, up ahead. Sakura pointed forwards for Naruto and Hinata to see Idate currently running on the road. Naruto put more strength in his legs as he accelerated to catch up with the guy. Hey road hog. Pull over to the side so I can give you a speeding ticket and a knuckle sandwich to go with it. Naruto shouted. Idate looked behind and his eyes widened in shock upon seeing someone whom he thought to have left far behind was actually behind him and catching up in some weird looking shoes with wheels underneath them. Idate turned off the path and ran into the forest with Naruto close behind, Sakura and Hinata wanted to follow as well but decided against it since they could find him again with Hinata's Byakugan and remained on the road. Idate was darting left and right around the trees and leaping over rocks while trying to stay ahead and at the same time lose the blonde. Meanwhile Naruto took to drifting around the trees then he launched himself off a slanted rock for a makeshift ramp as he landed on the treetops and grinded along the branches before performing a method air at the end and landing back on the ground to stay in the chase. Soon they exited out of the forest and were running along the ledge of a tall cliff wall at their side. You're not getting away from me. Naruto yelled out from behind as the ledge is too narrow for him to overtake. We'll see about that. Idate yelled back. Unknown to them, Idate had stepped on a certain spot of the ledge which caused the whole thing to crumble from behind him and Naruto was coming up fast. Narakan watch out. Kurama spoke worriedly. Don't worry Kyukin, I got this, said Naruto. Naruto leapt towards the cliff wall, then he landed on it with the air treks going even faster as he skated along the wall in a wide arc and was spinning like top before finally landing back on the ledge when it had stopped crumbling and was behind a stunned Idate. I'll have to admit that was pretty cool, said Idate. Thanks but that doesn't mean you're off the hook, Naruto. True but I have things to do and places to be e.so see you later. Idate took something out of his pocket and threw it towards the ground, causing a large cloud of smoke much to Naruto's. Surprise as he burst through the cloud and saw that he was gone. But how? He was right in front of me, 
Naruto looked around to find himself back on the path and turned around to see an intersection, he must have known that we were coming here and used the smoke pellet to throw me off while he took another direction, it's best that we wait here for Sakurasan and Hinata-san to find us, Chinami suggested to which Naruto complied as he doubled back and waited. Sure enough Hinata and Sakura arrived before stopping before him as their air treks disappeared in a flash of light along with his. I take it that you didn't catch him Narutakun, said Sakura. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, yeah, he had me completely off guard when he used a smoke pellet to get away despite him not being a ninja, but still, we're very close to the land of tea now so we should get going, said Hinata. Continuing on their way, the group finally arrived at their destination which is a town called Degarashi where they followed the followed the client's address in the mission scroll to a large mansion. Naruto and the girls were allowed inside and led to the clan's main room where they saw a man with grey shaggy wearing a grey hakama sitting before them. Welcome and I thank you all for coming, it's good to see you again Naruto, said the man who smiled upon seeing Naruto. Same here Jirakosan, said Naruto with a smile. Do you know him Naruto-kun? Sakura asked curiously. Yeah, we met some time ago when Tsunada Bakken and I were returning to the village, Naruto replied. He's right, Tsunadesan is an old friend of mine, said Jirocho for the rest to nod in understanding. Tsunadesama told us that you would explain what the mission is about, said Hinata. Of course, please sit down while I explain the reason why you're here, said Jirocho, Naruto and the girls sat down as they got ready to listen. Before I tell you about my request, you'll need to know about the dedication ceremonies which is held at the great Todoroki shrine every four years. It all started many years ago, legend says that there had been a terrible storm. In desperation, the people dedicated the Ryuko jewels to the great Todoroki shrine and it worked. The storm subsided and now the ceremony has been held every four years, Originally it was just a rededication of the jewels then it later turned into a festival and then a race with the winner of the race being hailed as a great hero, said Jirocho. That sounds like a nice festival, said Hinata. Indeed it is, however what used to be a friendly race has now taken a more troubling aspect, what do you mean, asked Sakura. For many generations, Port Degarashi had been divided between two families, the Wasabi whom I'm the head of and the Wagarashi who are two rivaling gambling organizations. Both sides wanted control the town which led into disputes and then into violent street fights with the townspeople getting drawn. Into the crossfire with many being seriously injured or worse, that's terrible, said Hinata. Jirocho nodded solemnly, indeed, then our district leader gathered the two clans together with a plan to end the cycle of violence. Henceforth the control of the town would not be settled by street brawls but in a competition, and I'm sure that competition has something to do with the race and the ceremony right, said Naruto. That is correct, four years ago the Wagarashi beat us soundly by hiring a ninja and we found out that they've done the same thing this year. Which is why we sent messengers to your village seeking help so as to level the playing field, but they were ambushed before they could reach your village, the Wagarashi have no honor whatsoever said Kurama angrily. Then Jirocho suddenly kneeled before Naruto and the others much to their, I beg of you, please lend our clan your strength. If we lose again, the Wagarashi will control this town for four more years, please stop bowing Jirokosan. Of course we'll help you, so who are we supposed to escort, said Naruto with Sakura and Hinata nodding in agreement. Thank you very much, I'll call him in, Jirocho rose up and clapped his hands twice. Then a sliding door to the right opened up to reveal someone whom the trio are quite familiar with. Yes boss, you called for me, the person looked around and also recognized the trio as he and Naruto pointed at each other. You, they both shouted at the same time. Oh so you have met Idate before? That makes things a lot easier, said Jirocho with smile. I won't be so sure about that, thought the girls as they watched lightning clash between the two boys who were glaring at each other. Later that day, Naruto and the girls were walking through the streets of the town. Apparently the race will be taking place the next day, the main reason which Naruto took the time to take a walk was because Idate was seriously getting on his nerves and what happened back at the teahouse didn't help matters. 
Naruto escorted Hinata to a nearby shop to buy a souvenir for Hanabi, she reached into one of the trays to pick out a charm then she looked at the price tag attached and was taken aback by what she read, Naruto looked over her shoulder in curiosity and had the same reaction as well. How could something like this cost so much, I know very well that it shouldn't be that expensive, thought Naruto. It might have something to do with the Wagarashi clan as they're currently in control of the town, said Kurama. I know what you're all thinking that it's too expensive, the group turned around to a lady whom they guessed to be the owner was smiling apologetically, they felt a bit uncomfortable because she was right, believe me when I say that I wouldn't be selling them at those prices but the Wagarashi were the ones who ordered for them to be set that way, chalk up another reason for Jirocho to win this competition, thought Naruto. With a frown on his face. Suddenly they heard a crash from outside and ran out to see what's going on, they saw a man sitting on the ground with broken doors underneath him with three men looming with menacing smirks on their faces. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, said the man on the ground. One of the men reached down and pulled him up by the collar of his shirt with an evil smile, surely you haven't forgotten the memo, we of the Wagarashi can take what they want. You wouldn't be in business if it weren't for us, I know, I know but still dot taking them without paying, oh if it's about paying dot then here you go. The thug reared his fist back and brought forward towards the man's face, everyone closed their eyes not wanting to see until they heard a smack. The townspeople slowly opened their eyes and were shocked to a see a boy with spiky blonde hair and whisker like marks on his cheeks holding back the punch much to the shock of the thugs who then glared angrily at him. Hey who the heck are you, shouted one of the thugs. Just a passing through ninja dot remember that. Why you little dot get him. He let go of the man and charged at Naruto along with the other two thugs with the intent to beat the cocky brat to the ground. After a one-sided beat down involving punches, kicks and a bit of wrestling moves, the bystanders watched in awe as Naruto stood with a smirk on his face and not even a scratch was on him while the three thugs were limping away with black eyes, broken noses and swollen cheeks after giving back the wallet which they had taken from the man earlier before. Next time, things will be different you little brat, one of the thugs groaned out. Hey guys, I feel like going for round two. Wanna go? Naruto called out while cracking his knuckles loud enough for them to hear, the thug stiffened in fear before taking off down the road leaving behind a trail of dust. And those little piggies ran wa 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 all the way home, said Naruto in a squeaky voice, making everyone around him laugh at the spectacle. Thank you whoever you are for helping me, said the man looking grateful. It was nothing, I was glad to help, said Naruto with a smile. If only the wasabi were to win the race, then Will would be through with them for good, said the lady of the shop. Then we'll just have to make sure of that, right Hinatakan, Sekurakan, the girls nodded in affirmation before making their return to Jirocho's mansion to prepare for the race tomorrow. The next morning before the sun rose, everyone had gathered at the port which was the starting point of the race. It was obvious that the members of the Wagarashi clan and the wasabi clan were there as well. Naruto, Sakura and Hinata were standing by while Idate was doing a few warm-up stretches. They could also see the runner representing the Wagarashi clan but didn't see any ninja near him which confused them a bit. So how exactly is this race ran Sakurakan, asked Naruto after. Checking his equipment in his ninja pouch. Sakura took out a map and began to explain to him, this race is a point A to B type of race Naruto-kun. The starting point is the Haber of Degarashi where the runners make their way to the Madariki Shrine via boat which is the midpoint. After picking the Ryuko jewels from the Madaroki, the runners then make their way to the Great Todoroki Shrine with the first one to get there winning the race, so those are just the basic rules right? asked Hinata. Yeah aside from that anything goes, shortcuts, dirty tricks among others. Which is why hiring ninjas doesn't break the rules, judging by the fact that we don't see the hired ninja of the Wagarashi clan here must mean that they're hiding somewhere so we must be careful since we don't their possible rank either, said Naruto with the girls nodding in affirmation. I don't care what you guys do as long as you stay out of my way, said Idate with a scowl. Fine but if you get yourself into trouble, then we will step in to help you out whether you like or not, Naruto retorted. 
Narutakan please calm down, said Hinata. Okay Hinatakan, then loudspeaker blared loudly as the announcer spoke through it, attention everyone the great Todoroki shrine race is about to begin, with Aidate Marino representing the Wasabi clan and Fukusk Ijiakuya representing the Wagarashi clan. Naruto and the others looked at Aidate with surprise on their faces upon hearing his last name. Marino? Isn't that the last name of Ibiki, said Kurami who was just as surprised. He might be related to him, Chinami suggested. We'll ask him after the race, no need to distract him now, thought Naruto. Runners, take your marks, said the announcer. Idate and Fukusk took running positions as the gates opened up and everyone could see the sun rising from the horizon and the boats were ready for sailing. Naruto and the girls got ready to follow once they take off. Go! The runners immediately took off for the boats, then Idate did something which surprised everyone who were watching that he actually changed directions and ran to the left away from the dock. What is that guy doing? He's going the wrong way. Naruto yelled angrily. Go after him Narakan, said Kurama. Naruto ran after Idate with Hinata and Sakura close behind and wondering why he was running in a different direction. What the heck do you think you're doing Idate? Turn around and get back in the race. Naruto yelled in anger. The blonde ninja and his team chased after their wayward escort who is currently running completely off the race track through the trees to who knows where. There's no way that I'm turning around so you can just forget about it. Idate yelled back and picked up the pace with the others chasing after him. Why do you suppose he's taking through this path instead of the original? asked Hinata. Maybe he has something planned, remember that aside from the basic rules that anything else goes so it could be that he thought to take another route, said Sakura thoughtfully. Even so, we need to keep him within our sights. I'm going on ahead to do just that, Naruto channeled Chakra to his feet and boosted his speed to run after till he was right behind him. If this is part of your plan then where is it that you're heading to? It's none of your business where I'm going so just stay out of my way, said Idate. How am I going to get it through into your noggin that it's my mission to escort as well as protect you? Suddenly Naruto noticed that something strange was going on. There was a certain tree which he had just that he was sure to have seen before in the past five minutes and apparently Idate had noticed as well. I know that I passed this place before, this must be some sort of genjutsu. In that case, Idate did the ram hand sign and performed the release technique. Could you help me out here Kuchin? thought Naruto. Sure thing Narakan. Kurama pulsed her chakra through his body in his view changed to reveal that he was standing along the ledge of a cliff wall which was bordering the edge of the sea. Thanks Kuchin, Naruto looked to see that Idate was running towards a bend and wasn't slowing down before turning, could it be that, his thoughts were confirmed when Idate ran right off the edge, damn it. Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto dashed forward and leapt of the edge right as his clones appeared and grabbed each other's legs before his to form a makeshift rope before he managed to grab Idate by the scruff of his shirt, then the clones proceeded to pull them back up to the cliff before disappearing in puffs of smoke. Idate took long deep breaths before finally calming down as he spoke, what just happened? I know I performed the seal to dispel Genjutsu so why didn't it work? Then Sakura and Hinata who had her Byakugan active caught up to them, my Byakugan saw a secondary layer of chakra above the first so it must have been a double layered genjutsu and that you only dispelled the first layer, then your chakra pulse must have dispelled them all together, thanks Kuchin, thought Naruto with a smile. Anything for my Narakan, Kurama responded happily. Since you're going this way, then that must mean that you know a faster route, said Sakura. Idate nodded to confirm her statement, that's right, at this time of the year there are strong seasonal winds blowing hard across the sea. Back at the starting line I noticed that through the clouds that the winds were blowing towards us and there is a port to the north where the current flows directly into Nagi Island, which also means that your opponent would be seriously hampered by the weather and that would you a good lead in the race, however for us to have fallen into a genjutsu must mean that the hired ninja must be on to us so it's best that you stay near us okay? said Naruto. Humph, do whatever you want, Idate snorted. The group continued on. 
their way with Idate leading them until they had arrived at the end of a shore where there's a much smaller port. Idate went to a nearby shack and knocked on the door which opened up to reveal an old man who seemed to recognize the boy as he smiled. Ah, uh, Idate, so you're here, said the old man. Yes, the weather was exactly like I predicted it so I'm hoping that you would loan me your boat, said Idate. Of course, I've prepped it up for you. Jirakosan has done a lot for me over the years, so you just focus on winning the race and beat the Wagarashi clan, of course, soon enough, the group had set sail for the island with Naruto and the girls making sure that the ropes among other things were secure for the boat to sail properly. Sakura and Hinata walked over to Naruto who was steering the rudder to keep the boat on course. Narutokun, don't you think that there's something strange about Idate? The kind of training he must have gone through to move at such speed reminds me of Lee San when he took of his weights in his fight against Gaiachin, it could be that he came from a hidden village, said Sakura. I also saw with my Byakugan that he has more chakra than anyone else in the Wasabi clan and the chakra coils are well developed, said Hinata. Not only that, he shares the same last name with Ibiki Marino, said Naruto. What did you just say? They all turned to Idate who looked at them with shock, what did you say the name was? We said the name is Ibiki Marino, do you know him? asked Sakura. That is the name of my big brother but I thought that he was dead, well he isn't, we met him as he was the proctor of the first stage of the Chunin exam, said Naruto. This certainly proves that he originated from the hidden leaf but the question is why is he here, said Kurama. Before Naruto could reply to her an arrow struck the floorboard of the boat. This put everyone on alert as Naruto drew out Mume no Tamanu, Sakura took out a kunai and Hinata activated her Byakugan. Suddenly a volley of arrows rained down from the sky towards them but Naruto was ready for them as he sheathed Mume no Tamanu before leaping into the air and took a Madare IAI stance. Secret Arts Quick drawl, then he quickly drew it out to unleash several high-speed slashes around him which cut down all of the arrows before landing back on the ship. Narutokun, there's a boat following us, said Hinata. Naruto turned saw that it was indeed a boat which chasing them, on board it are a trio of ninja who wear similar white jumpsuits and respirators, the headbands that wear signifies that they hailed from the rain village, he noticed that one of them looked awfully familiar. I recognize one of them back in the second stage of the Chunin exam, he tried to attack me in order to get the scroll but it didn't end well for him and Tora had found a training dummy in him, said Naruto. Then the rain ninjas fired a couple of arrows with long ropes attached to them which embedded themselves into the side and mast, slowing down their ship and drawing closer to them. Securikin, I need you to stay behind and protect Idate while Heineken and I deal with these bozos, okay Narutokun, Sakura stood near Idate ready to defend against any sort of attacks. Naruto dashed to the side of the ship and slashed the ropes with the Muramesa blade then turned around to throw a handful of shuriken at the ropes on the mast to cut them as well. Naratosama don't your guard down, it seems like they've boarded the ship, said Chinami. Sure enough several clones of the rain ninjas appeared on the ship by phasing through the floorboards and mast like ghosts. Narutokun, these clones are different from the clones that you use and some of them aren't clones at all, said Hinata with her Byakugan active. Okay then let's take them down in order to flush out the real ones, said Naruto then he rushed towards one of the clones and slashed for them to disappear before moving on to the next one. Hinata was using the Jukin to strike the faux chakra points of the attacking clones and disrupting them with her chakra enough to make them disappear in puffs of smoke. A rain ninja approached from behind with the intent to stab her back, she swiveled around and parried the kunai with a bent elbow then straightened it to strike at the head before performing a double fist to take it down. Hinata stepped back to take a stance which is the jukin but the praying mantis style. During training, Naruto decided to teach it to her seeing that it could utilize the same mechanics of the jukin and sure enough it proved itself to be just as effective but only Hayashi. Hanabi and Niji knew about it as the elders of the main Hyuga family would raise a fuss about tradition. Secret Arts, Hell Spinner Naruto proceeded to spin around like a top as he moved around slashing the clones to bits. That sword brat is really getting on my nerves, Kagari I need you to switch to plan B, 
said the leading rain ninja. You got it, the second rain ninja performed a series of hand signs and his body emitted a dark aura, water style, black rain jutsu. Suddenly black droplets of water proceeded to fall on the ship much to the other's confusion, Naruto slashed away a clone before looking at the droplets on his hand which he raised to his face and sniffed at it. This smells like oil. Could they be trying to? Naruto heard a twang and looked up to see an arrow with a flaming tip heading straight towards them. Before he could intercept it, the arrow had already struck the boat, setting it ablaze. Naruto-kun, can't you use your water jutsus to put out the fire? shouted Sakura. It's already too late for that, the sail has been completely burnt. We need to abandon the ship so get I date out of here. Naruto responded while kicking a rain clone away from him. Why should I trust you ninjas? For all I know you could be using me as a decoy in your attempt to escape, said Idate with a look of fear. We wouldn't do that Ida Tessin. Our mission is to protect you, so you must escape while we draw their attention, said Sakura but the boy didn't look too convinced. Damn it man! Just get out of here or you're gonna get yourself killed. Naruto yelled out in anger. Those words definitely got through to Idate, who nodded hesitantly before diving into the sea swam towards the port at Nagi Island. Back on the now sinking boat, Naruto and girls had finally cleared out the attacking clones. The ship is completely totaled, we need to get off now. But first. Naruto dashed to the bow of the boat and launched himself into the air, a red rune with Siddha characters surrounded him and flames appeared on his hands, here's payback for torching our ride. Ninpo, Art of the Inferno, then he put them together and thrust forwards as he shot a giant fireball towards the Rain Ninja's boat resulting in an explosion with it being completely destroyed. Naruto landed on top of the water and turned around to see Sakura and Hinata standing a short distance before running over to them. Let's hurry over to Idate quickly before anything else happens, said Naruto, the girls nodded in affirmation then he bit his thumb hard enough to draw blood before performing some hand signs and slamming his right palm on the water's surface, there was a puff of smoke before it faded to a creature in its place. It is a large blue marine lizard with long pectoral fins and smaller pelvic fins. Its first dorsal fin resembles the tip of a blade and the second smaller dorsal fin matches the color of its body, it also wears a long deep blue sleek helmet. Hello Naratosan, it's nice to see you again, said the sea creature. You too Tylamon, Naruto replied with a smile. Narutakun, who is this? asked Hinata. I would like to introduce you to Tylamon who is also known to his fellow Digimon as the Jet Plane of the Deep Seas, it's a pleasure to meet you all, said Tylamon, with the girls bowing in response, how may I help you Naratosan? We could use a ride to Nagi Island, we need to reunite with our client whom we're assigned to protect, very well, climb on and I'll take you there, said Tylamon. The trio were about to do so when they heard a splash and turned to see that the rain ninjas had returned much to their annoyance. Nobody is going anywhere. You Kanoha brats are going to pay for what you did to us back at the Chunin exams, yelled one of the rain ninjas in anger before performing a series of hand signs to summon a large group of water clones behind them. We don't have time for this, we're in a hurry. Tylamon, could you help us out? asked Naruto. Of course Naratosan, Terror Plankton. Tylamon opened her mouth and fired a powerful stream of water which slammed into the rain ninjas to send them flying and even disperse their water clones as well. They attempted to get up but immediately doubled over in. Pain, it's useless to resist, my attack contains poisonous plankton which is quite lethal to those unfortunate to be the target. Now to put you out of your misery, then Tylamon swam forwards at high speed, tilt anchor, she lashed with her tail to send them flying back, and to end it, torpedo attack, she opened her mouth again to fire three metallic underwater projectiles which rushed towards their targets and exploded within proximity with nary a trace of the rain ninjas. Strong as always, Tylamon, said Naruto. Thank you Naratosan, but let us make haste and get you to the island, Tylamon turned and made for Nagi Island while swimming a great speed much to the surprise of the girls. 
Meanwhile Idate had made it over to the shores of Nagi Island, however he ran into someone whom he was all too familiar with and not the happy kind. I never thought that I would ever see you again, Aoi Rokusho, said Idate. The green-haired man was wearing a grey sleeveless jumpsuit with a navy blue line in the middle, he also carries an umbrella and wears the hidden rain forehead protector. He smirked as he looked at the boy making weak attempts to get back to his feet. I was kind of expecting you to run away that this wouldn't be the first time, said Aoi. Shut up. All of it happened because of you. Don't bother trying to justify yourself, after all you abandoned your village and betrayed your brother, it was all because of you and people like that don't deserve to live, Aoi threw his umbrella into the air and drew out a handful of sunbon needles which he then threw at Idate, hitting different parts of his body making him cry out in pain. The weather changed as it began to rain on the island, Idate tried to get up but for some reason his body was feeling numb. What's happening to my body, said Idate. If you wish to know before you die, my sunbon is coated with paralyzing poison that would shut down parts of your nervous system. As of now, your running days are over and the only finishing which you would be crossing is death, Aoi proceeded to kick a helpless eye date on the ground without remorse, trying to show the world that you're a man of integrity? Please the only thing you're good at is running away, stick with that. Boss that I'm so sorry, I gave you my word that you could rely on me. And now that I've failed you, Idate's vision was slowly getting darker and he could see Aoi smirking evilly at him. But before he completely lost consciousness. Sunlight heat wave. He saw a wave of yellow energy which forced Aoi to leap backwards and someone stood close to him, what he could see was a familiar blonde hair. Naruto? It was indeed Naruto who now stands before Idate and was currently holding a lance of a draconic design. Hinata had alerted them of what she saw with her Byakugan, which made Naruto call on the Sunlight Heart to help him get ahead of the others. That's far enough bub, said Naruto pointing the lance at his new opponent. It seems. Like my minions weren't quite up to the job of serving as distractions against you leaf ninjas, said Aoi. It goes to show how one just can't get good help these days, well they're genin so it's pretty much obvious, and genin like you can't possibly defeat me, then let me give you an update. Naruto charged at Aoi with the lance and launched a rapid fire of thrusts, the rain ninja closed his umbrella and was using it to deflect the incoming attacks. Naruto performed a one-handed slash which was avoided but he kept up the pressure with a jumping roundhouse kick making a successful hit on Aoi's chest much to his annoyance. Sunlight Slasher Naruto swung the lance while dashing forwards, but Aoi had seen it coming and dashed backwards with the lance being several meters apart. Your lance lacks reach unlike the others, did you really choose it just for its looks? Aoi taunted. Naruto simply smirked, there's more to something than your first glance umbrella man, for example, extend sunlight heart, the lance immediately opened up while emitting yellow energy with the tip jabbing into Aoi's chest hard enough to draw blood. You little ninja art, Senban shower. Aoi tossed his umbrella into the air which then started to spin rapidly and needles shot out of it towards Naruto and Idate. I don't think so. Wind style. Typhoon Dance Naruto tossed Sunlight Heart into the air and sped through a series of hand signs before spinning like a top as the wind swirled around him, deflecting the needles to the ground before stopping to raise a hand towards the sky and caught the descending lance, it's my turn now, Sunlight Heat Wave, full blast, the lance opened once more with the yellow energy surging before rearing back and swinging forwards to unleash a large wave of energy. Aoi scrambled out of the way to avoid the attack and watched in disbelief as the wave of energy kept going and leaving behind a long trench behind in its wake. What the hell are you brat? No mere genin should have that level of power. Aoi demanded. That's thing, I'm not a genin but a chunin. Well it's your fault for underestimating me, Naruto spoke smugly. Damn you, no matter with I date poison there's no need for me to be here but next time things will be different, Aoi threw a smoke pellet to the ground and made his escape, Naruto wanted to pursue the rain ninja but he heard someone call his name. Naruto-kun. 
he turned and saw Hinata and Sakura who are riding on Tylamon towards him. Hinatakan, Sakurakan, I need your help with Idate. He was attacked by another rain ninja and got hit by Sunban possibly coated with poison. Okay, but we need to get to get him out of the rain and to someplace warm before we can tend to his wounds and purge him of the poison, said Sakura. After Tylamon returned to her realm, Naruto and a shadow clone carried Idate to a small cave that they managed to locate and the girls proceeded to apply first aid to the wounds. Turns out that Tsunade had given them a bottle of antidote which cures a variety of poison which they gave to Idate to swallow. Hinata was currently examining Idate with her Byakugan before deactivating her Kekiai Genkai, the poison has been removed but his legs are seriously injured, it would even hurt to walk yet alone run, and Lady Tsunade hasn't yet taught us on how to perform any medical ninjutsu, said Sakura worriedly. Naruto was deep in thought before snapping his fingers upon coming up with an idea, hang on, I know someone who can heal just as effectively as Granny Tsunade, he bit his thumb once more and performed a set of hand signs before slamming his palm on the ground, summoning Jutsu. There was a puff of smoke before fading to reveal a small pink bipedal rabbit, his fur is completely pink, and he wears a pair of headphones, a pink scarf, and a pair of red boots. The small rabbit looked around confusedly but when he saw Naruto, he tackled the blonde to the ground while smiling happily. Naruto. I missed Yukyu, said the rabbit. Na Naruto? Who is this little cutie? asked Sakura who was visibly shaking as she fought the urge to squeal loudly and snatch the pink rabbit off Naruto's arms and cuddle it, she wasn't the only one with Hinata focusing solely on it as she has a thing for rabbits. This is Cutemon, he is one of the first group of Digimon to meet me when I first signed their summoning scroll, it's nice to meet Yukyu, said Cutemon with a wave. When this mission is over, I'll make Naruto summon this cute bunny so that I can cuddle it, the girls thought simultaneously sending a shiver up Naruto's and Cutemon's spine. Anyway Cutemon, I need your help to heal the injuries on this guy, Naruto pointed to Idate laying on the ground. Okay Naruto. Just leave it to Mekyu, cute Mon went over to Idate and held his hands over the wounds, healing glow, a green aura emitted from his hands and the girls watched in fascination as the wounds were quickly healing. After a while, Idate's body looked as if he was never hurt in the first place, I'm all Doniku, thanks for the help cute Mon, I'll see you later and say hi to Doriolamon for me okay, said Naruto with a smile. Okay Naruto, bye bye Q. Cutemon waved before disappearing in a puff of smoke much to Hinata's and Sakura's disappointment. Moments later, Idate began to stir before fully awakening as he looked around in confusion. I can see that you're finally awake, how are you feeling? asked Naruto. Where is he? What happened to Aoi, and why doesn't my body hurt? I remember being injured and poisoned, said Idate. Narutakun arrived in time to drive away that rain ninja. Then we gave an antidote and Naruto had one of his summons heal your injuries, said Hinata. May I ask who this Aoi person is? It seems like you knew him before, said Sakura. Idate looked hesitant but decided to speak up, he dot used to be my sensei back when I was still in Kanoha, that confirms. Our theory that he was ninja from Kanoha since he knows so much about the village, said Kurama. But after he betrayed the village, he became a jounin of the hidden rain village, Idate gritted his teeth in frustration. How did it happen? I get the feeling that his betrayal played a part to why you left the village, said Naruto. Yeah you're right about that. It all began when I failed the first stage of the chunin exam and it really bummed me out, that was when Aoi showed up and told me that there was another way to become a chunin. Naruto paled upon hearing that as it sounded all too similar to when he failed the graduation exam for the third time and was tricked by Mizuki to steal the forbidden scroll. Later that night, I arrived with the required items which was the Raijin once wielded by the Naidame and the scroll, it was there that Aoi revealed that it was a lie and since I stole the sacred treasures of the hidden leaf, I had no other choice but to exile myself in fear of being arrested. It was later then that I met boss Jirocho and he took me in, treated me like someone he could depend on and now I've let him down. Nothing seems to go right when I try to do something for someone. 
this is not the time to depreciate yourself. You still have a chance to prove yourself, shouted Naruto. But how? With Aoi out there, how am I supposed to win when he could appear to kill me? That's why we're here to protect you while you run the race, we'll make sure that no harm ever comes to you again. Just like Gyrokosan is counting on you, you can count on us to have your back. You've got only one shot at this, don't throw in the towel just yet. Naruto declared with the girls nodding in agreement. I date reminisced back to when he first met Jirocho and then the old man who was willing to lend him the boat because they had placed a lot of faith in him, he looked up to see Naruto standing before him with a hand held out. You're right, I've got only one opportunity and there's no way I'm going to waste it. He grabbed Naruto's hand and was pulled up to stand. That's right, like my crazy sensei says, it's not over until the fat opera lady sings, said Naruto much to the confusion of the others. Okay, let's go. Idate ran out of the cave with Naruto and the girls close behind, don't worry boss, I'll prove to you that your faith in me has not been misplaced. Meanwhile at the Madaroki shrine, Jirocho stood at the entrance of the temple watching the path to catch a glimpse of Idate to appear. Boss, I just got word that Idate is heading this way along with the leaf ninjas that you hired, said one of the men. He didn't run away from the start of the race, you were right, said the other. Of course I was, I knew he had it in him all the time and the leaf ninjas are there to support him, said Jirocho, attaboy I date, keep coming. You're almost there. Naruto, I date and the girls were running along the dirt path as quickly as they could until the Tori gates were in their sights, however it was what they saw beyond the gates that stopped them in their tracks. Dang, how many stairs are there to climb all the way to the top, like Naruto just said, there was an extremely long flight of stairs leading all the way to the top of the great Madaroki shrine. No one knows, it's one of the reasons why they call it the spirit breaker, said Idate. However Naruto smirked at hearing it, that sounds like a challenge, and I'm gonna conquer it. Heh, we'll see about that, Idate dashed up the stairs with Naruto running alongside him. Hinata and Sakura were panting in exhaustion as they watched the two boys ascend the stairs. I always forget not to underestimate his stamina, said Sakura tiredly. He's always been that way Sakurakan, said Hinata. I know, makes me wonder if we can even keep up with him once we get married to him, he might wear us out, Sakura spoke teasingly, making Hinata literally withdraw into her shell by pulling her hood up over her head to hide her blush. Naruto and Idate were running up the stairs when Idate called out to the blonde, Hey Naruto, there's something I wanted to ask. What is it? asked Naruto curiously. When you took on the Chunin exam, did you encounter anything like a tenth and final question that came from out of nowhere? Yeah my group and I did, it was very tricky since the point of the question was whether you want to answer it or not, given the conditions for the choice that you make, yeah point three years ago, I ran into the same question when I took on the Chunin exams, said I date. How did it go? Well. Flashback start Idate sat in the examination room with the other participants as they waited in anticipation for the final part of the first stage of the Chunin exam with Marino Ibiki standing before them. All right, it's time for the tenth and final question, said Ibiki. Okay big brother, what trick do you have up your sleeve this time, thought Idate. This time, you're not only competing against the other genin here but also against your own teammates. I'm talking about going up against your own squad, whoever scores the lowest in your squad will fail, and the one who fails will never partake the Chunin exams and remains a genin for life, a random genin called out in protest, that's crazy. Going up against our own teammates? That goes against every rule of, in here, I am the rules and there's nothing you can do about it, Ibiki cut him off, if there's anyone who wishes to withdraw, now is the time. If you choose to quit then the members of your squad will be disqualified, however you will still be eligible to take the exams again in six months time. So then dot what will it be? One by one, the participants got up from their seats and left with several others following after while a few of them chose to stay with Idate being one of them. A one out of three chances of being thrown out for good, I. 
Should be able to beat those odds but that means one of my squad will remain a genin for life. Should I go for it? Thought I date. So no one else is leaving? Asked Ibiki looking around. All right then, to you who have chosen to remain I have one thing to say that you failed. Everyone sat there stunned before jumping from their seats and yelling at Ibiki while Idate was simply shocked. Why would you say that we failed? shouted one of the genin. Are you penalizing us for being confident to take the tenth question? shouted another. So confident that you would sacrifice the future of one of your own squad, none of you deserve to be chunin for such a decision. You're dismissed, Ibiki responded before walking out of the examination hall. Flashback end, whoa, that's really something, said Naruto in wonder. Indeed, I wonder how you would have answered that question had you encountered it, said Chinami. So what was the question he hit you guys with, asked Idate. Well the question was about whether one is willing to risk everything including the lives of his squad to acquire information which if genuine could lead to victory for your village, however if false would result in the death of your squad members and destruction of the village. It all counts down to the choice that you make, take the risk for an unknown information or simply back away, said Naruto. Whoa, that is completely different from what I encountered, Idate spoke while in awe. Yeah, especially when we had to cheat in order to solve the previous questions without having to get caught by the invigilators, said Naruto. Well I know is that I trusted my brother and he failed me, I trusted him and he ruined my life forever, I don't think that's the case. I can tell that he was looking out for you but at the same doesn't want to coddle you as it would look like he was playing favorites among the ranks, said Naruto. What do you mean by that? Maybe you should think back about the things he said to you, from what I know of him he tends to hide what he truly means underneath his words, said Naruto, leaving Idate to run silently beside him. Soon enough, the duo finally reached the top of the stairs where a large crowd cheered loudly upon seeing Idate. Ahead of them was the great Madaroki shrine where inside lays a stone pedestal and on it is a blue orb with the silhouette symbol of a tiger and there is a hollowed out part next to it. Is your body having any problems? asked Naruto. None at all, I have your summon to thank for that. I'll get the Ryuko jewel then we'll catch up with Fukusk and overtake him, said Idate. And you can leave Aoi to me, said Naruto. Idate dashed forward and grabbed the Ryuko jewel while Naruto wrote a message on the trans scroll to the one on Sakura and Hinata to tell them that they're still going on ahead. You know that the girls aren't going to be happy about this, said Kurama. I know but we can't afford to wait. Either with that runner from the Wagarashi clan being ahead of us, thought Naruto, with that said they continued on their way. Meanwhile Fukusk stands before a long rope bridge built over a deep valley to the other side. Once I cross the bridge then I'll be over at Uzo Island, said Fukusk, then Aoi landed next to him with a frown on his face. Then you best hurry and get over to the other side, Idate has already made it to the Madaroki shrine and is on his way here, said Aoi. What? I thought you said that you would take care of him. Fukusk yelled in anger. Yes, but apparently the head of the Wasabi clan had hired some very competent ninja to guard Idate, now get going while there's still time, humph. Some ninja you are, completely worthless, Fukusk turned to before his shoulder was grabbed and forced to turn around as Aoi grabbed him by the neck and lifted him into the air. Now you listen here, I'm here helping you because I have to since it's my duty. But one more little crack like that then I'll break you in half, Aoi spoke with menace. Okay, sorry that I'm sorry. Fucus gasped out before being dropped to the ground. That's better, now get moving, said Aoi. Right. Fukusk scrambled to his feet and ran across the rope bridge while Aoi used the body flicker jutsu to disappear from view. Naruto and Idate were running along the path until the rope bridge came into their view and saw Fukusk running across it. There he is, we've almost caught up to him said Idate. Naruto immediately perked up when he heard Chinami call out to him urgently. Naratosama, there's an incoming attack heading straight towards Idatesan. 
Naruto lunged forward to grab Idate by the back of his collar and yanked him back while moving forward and drawing out the Mumei no Tamanu in time to block an attack and then jumping backwards with a frown on his face. I was wondering when you were going to show up Aoi, said Naruto. I knew that you were expecting me, so I didn't want to disappoint you Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, Kanoha's weapon master, rumors say that you carry mysterious weapons within that bracelet on your hand. Seems like IWA has put quite a bounty on your head just for being related to their most hated enemy, said Aoi with a smirk. Idate looked at Naruto in shock at the revelation, you mean that you're the son of the Yandame? Well I didn't inherit these good looks from any other blonde ya, no, I was wondering when they were going to put my name up on the bingo book after the invasion, Naruto pointed to his face and smirked. I'm pretty sure that the ninjas of Iwagakura are going to be very happy once I bring your body over to them, not only will I become rich but my ranking in the bingo book will increase, Aoi sneered. Need I remind you what happened the last time we fought? Naruto quirked an eyebrow at him. Oh I haven't forgot at all, which is why I came prepared, Aoi held out something which was all too familiar to Idate and a first for Naruto. Aoi was holding what appears to be the hilt of a sword designed to look like a vidra but instead of a steel blade, blade glowed bright yellow and appeared to be infused with pure electrical energy which was emanating from the cross guard while making a humming sound. That's the sword of the thunder god, said Idate. Of course you would recognize it, after all you were the one to steal from me, Aoi said with a sneer. That sword was once wielded by the Nidame, it made him extremely dangerous in the battlefield especially when used in combination with his water jutsus, it is also called Raijin for short, said Kurama. Now then, why don't you bring out that spear of yours and let's see whose weapon is the strongest. Aoi held out the Raijin with a smug look on his face. To think you used someone as innocent as I date to steal one of Kanoha's most valued relics, I'll be taking it back to its rightful place, Naruto took the Oboro stance with the Mumei no Tamanu. Music start, Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection, He-10 Naruto dashed forward and performed a horizontal slash at Aoi who raised the Raijin to block the incoming strike, electricity crackled from the blade as they clashed. Naruto broke off from the struggle with a one-handed backflip to build some distance from his opponent. Take this, lighting wave. Aoi unleashed a slash which sent out a crescent wave made of lightning at Naruto. Wind style, wind cutter. Naruto speed through a series of hand seals then wind gathered to his left hand and swirled around it, he swung the arm to launch a crescent wave of air. Both waves clashed with each other and struggled for domination however Naruto's jutsu won out with the elemental advantage and broke through as it shot straight towards Aoi who dodged to the side, my turn, secret arts. Specter blow. He raised the blade into the air and five purple orbs shot out from it and homed in on the target. Aoi raised the Raijin into the air and discharged large amounts of electricity from the blade which made contact with the purple orbs destroying them in the process. He grabbed the umbrella from his back and flung it into the air, ninja art, senbon shower, the umbrella proceeded to spin rapidly before firing a volley of needles towards Naruto. Secret Arts, Moonlit Glint Naruto swiftly sheathed the Mumei no Tamanu and drew out again to unleash multiple slashes all around him, deflecting the needles and also cutting the umbrella to pieces. Not missing a beat, Naruto dashed forward and launched a barrage of slashes at Aoi who was deflecting some of the attacks before retaliating with some of his own. Both opponents jumped away from each other while bearing wounds from being inflicted with the other's attacks though it appears that Aoi had received the most of it. I'm impressed that a chunin like you could keep up with a jounin like me for very long, though it seems like your sword might break with the next. Few strikes. To be expected of the Raijin which can cut through anything even that of a Muramesa blade, said Aoi with a smirk. He wasn't wrong as everyone could see numerous chips on the edge of the Mumei no Tamanu, Naruto frowned a bit before returning the blade back to its sheath to repair itself. To think a sword like the Raijin is in the hands of scum like him, it's a complete insult to the Nidame, thought Naruto, he hesitated on drawing out the Tsukiyatoshi due to its poor speed and suffering the same conditions as the Mumei no Tamanu, Chinamazon, 
is there any weapon I could use that could match up to the Raijin? Give me a moment, Chinami closed her eyes in concentration as she scoured through the archives for the most suitable weapon for her master before finally locating the information on just the one, I found one Naratosima. It is a powerful weapon which is only allowed to be wielded by the elite group of an organization that follows the ways of the shinobi which was once created to oppose a force that sought to conquer the world by force. The words to call upon it are. Naruto listened to Chinami's words before raising the bracelet up and channeling his chakra into it as he called out, running across fields, the bracelet glowed brightly causing everyone to close their eyes before fading away, it was at that moment when Hinata and Sakura arrived to see the weapon that Naruto was now holding. Naruto wields a broadsword in size and appearance with a pointed tip although it has a short handle perpendicular to the main handle, giving one the impression of a tonfa. He also wears a metal gauntlet with a red core on his left arm as well as small devices attached to the heels of his ninja sandals, what is most notable is the long flowing scarf around his neck as it appears to be made entirely of crimson energy. What kind of weapon is that, said Idate in wonder. We don't know Ida Tessin, however he would be able to defeat Aoi now, said Sakura. Allow me to introduce you to a weapon which is only wielded by the elite of the Striders, the Cypher Blade. Naruto pulled up his face mask and took a stance similar to that of the weapon's previous owner. Let's see if this so-called sword of yours can perform any better than your Muramesa blade, Aoi sneered then he waved the Raijin overheard in an arc to create several rings of electricity before swinging again to launch them at Naruto. The red energy scarf flared a bit as the cipher blade was covered in the same energy, Naruto held the blade at the ready as the electric rings drew close, reflect cipher, he slashed at the first ring, knocking it away from its trajectory and did the same with the second and third rings. The last ring was almost upon him when he slashed it to actually send it flying back to a shocked Aoi who used Raijin to absorb the reflected projectile. He dashed forward and attacked with a horizontal slash which was quickly blocked, Aoi willed the Raijin to emit crackles of lightning to shock Naruto however the cipher blade was unaffected and when Naruto jumped away, Aoi was surprised to see that the blade appeared completely undamaged. How is it that your sword isn't damaged by the Raijin? Aoi demanded. Naruto replied, that's because the cipher blade generates high voltage plasma particles which makes it capable of cutting through just about anything. Since two swords capable of slicing through anything clash, they pretty much cancel each other out, we'll just see about that. Aoi reared the Raijin back and swung it forward to launch another lightning wave. Naruto positioned the cipher blade behind as it built up plasma energy judging from the increasing brightness then he spun around and slashed at the electric projectile, completely dissipating it. He quickly closed in on his opponent ready to slash him, Aoi thrust the Raijin forward in an effort to stab him but Naruto saw it coming as the devices on his heels activated before he performed a slide across the ground with one of his legs sticking forward to kick. Aoi saw the attack coming and jumped into the air to avoid the attack, but he had a gut feeling that he made a serious mistake which was confirmed as Naruto dug his heels in the ground to lift himself up and performed a somersault backflip in the opposite direction towards Aoi. Savage Slash Naruto performed a rolling somersault and then outstretched both of his arms apart, making multiple slashes appear around him inflicting massive damage on Aoi as numerous cuts appeared on both his body and gear, happy landings, he somersaulted again and slammed a heel drop kick, sending Aoi crashing into the ground. Suddenly, both the plasma scarf and cipher blade changed colored from crimson red to bright yellow, explosive cipher. Down strike. He gripped the main handle with both hands while directing the blade towards the ground before descending with the intent to impale, Aoi rolled to the side just in time to avoid the blade as it stabbed into the ground however he wasn't ready for when the area around Naruto suddenly exploded and rocks flew in all directions pelting him. Amazing, to think that he could beat Aoi so soundly even when he wields the Raijin, said Idate. Naruto-kun has always been training very hard to become that strong, said Sakura. And his wanting to protect the people he cares about makes him train harder, Naruto-kun always puts his life on the line for them, said Hinata with a warm smile. Puts his lives before others. 
Idate's thoughts strayed back to when he took the Chunin exams and recalled the final question, could this be what Big Brother was aiming for when he asked that question? Naruto stood watching intently as Aoi struggled to his feet and the electric blade on the Raijin is visibly flickering like it was about to go out. Now's my chance to get the Raijin, thought Naruto, then the plasma scarf and cipher blade changed color again from bright yellow to a deep purple, magnetic cipher. Cipher boomerang, he reared his arm back and quickly brought it forward to throw the cipher blade at Aoi as it spun like a disc. Aoi sneered as he saw the incoming projectile, what's the point of that when you know I can simply avoid it, he dashed to the side just as the cipher blade flew by, however the Raijin was suddenly wrenched from his grip and he watched in shock as the prized weapon floated after the blade which returned to Naruto who caught both in each hand with a smirk on his face, how was that possible? Aoi yelled in anger and denial. If you were listening to what I said earlier, I changed the plasma into one with magnetic properties so when I threw it, the strong magnetic attraction was too much for the Raijin to resist resulting in me getting the blade and you weaponless, Naruto replied while placing the Raijin in his pouch and sheathing the cipher blade to the back of his waist, now it's time to end this, we can't afford to waste any more time with you. Naruto held out his hand and chakra began to gather around, it started to spin rapidly before finally solidifying into a blue spinning orb. Then a piece of the plasma scarf which had reverted back to its original color flowed into the sphere, changing its color from blue to crimson. I wasn't expecting that, but I don't mind the mix, said Naruto despite being momentarily surprised. Aoi took a few steps back with fear in his eyes before turning tail and scrambling for the woods, like hell I'm going to let you hit me with whatever jutsu that is. And who says I'm letting you get away? Naruto activated the gauntlet on his left arm as it opened up and a thin red beam of light shot out from it, he aimed the beam at Aoi then there was a loud bang as he took off in the form of a crimson streak. He instantly caught up and was right in front of him. Take this. Plasma Raisin Gan. Naruto rammed the spinning sphere into Aoi's gut and was surprised to see the technique easily burn through the skin as it grinded against it before sending Aoi flying as he screamed in agony over the edge of the cliff and into the valley below with death being his final destination. Music and Naruto made his way over to the group as the cipher blade and the equipment disappeared in a flash of light to signal that they have returned to the bracelet though he was a bit surprised by what happened earlier with his Raisingan. I never expected that to happen, do you have any idea Chinamazon? thought Naruto. If you recall what I told you back at Wave Country, this weapon must have wanted to help you in a way, said Chinami. Yeah well, I'm thankful for its help but now we should focus on more serious matters, thought Naruto as he drew close to Hinata, Sakura and Idate. Narutokun, are you okay? asked Hinata worriedly. I'm fine, Aoi has been dealt with and I recovered the Raijin, said Naruto turned to Idate, I've done my part and cleared the path of all obstacles, so it all comes down to you now, Idate stood up and looked at Naruto with determination, thank you Naruto, I'm definitely going to win this race, not only for the boss or the wasabi but for you guys also, then he reached into his leg warmers and pulled out the leg weights before dropping them to the ground as he dashed off much faster across the bridge and towards the finish line over at the great Todoroki shrine. At the said place were a massive crowd that gathered at either side of a very long stone tiled road, leading into the main building where their Ryuko jewels were to be placed and also signify the winner of the race, and also where the heads of the Wasabi clan and the Wagarashi clan waited for their runners. Instead of cheering and smiles, there were murmurs and frowns as they watched Fukusk of the Wagarashi clan casually jog down the road towards the goal. Oh no, the Wagarashi are going to win again, said one of the people. Where's the runner from the Wasabi clan? asked another. Fukusk was smirking as he approached the shrine, he almost at the shrine and I date is a mile away from here, I always knew that I had this race in the bag. I'm pretty sure that my boss is going to reward me for this despite the crowd not even cheering for me, suddenly the crowd began to cheer out loud much to Fukusk's confusion. Look! Here he comes, it's I date from the Wasabi clan. He turned to look behind and gaped in shock upon seeing Idate currently running towards him at top speed. 
I date. Jirocho called out happily upon seeing the boy. What the hell are you doing Fukusk? Run faster, shouted Kyoraku, the head of the Wagarashi clan. As if he heard him, Fukusk faced forward and increased his speed to cancel out the slowly closing gap between him and the pursuing I-date. I'm not going to lose, after coming all this way I'm definitely not going to lose. I-date brought himself lower to the ground to reduce the wind pressure and gain more speed, I'm putting everything I got into this final dash to win this for everyone. Sure enough, I-date has caught up with Fukusk and was running neck and neck together while closing in on the finishing line. I'm not going lose to you after coming all this way you little runt, shouted Fukusk pouring more speed to get ahead. Come on I-date, you can do it, shouted Jirocho. Boss dot you're right, I can go faster dot faster dot faster dot faster dot faster. I-date roared out as he willed his legs to run faster than ever before in his life overtaking and pulling ahead of Fukusk and crossing the finish line. The crowd roared out as they gathered around to celebrate the victory of the Wasabi clan and their freedom from the Wagarashi clan. Despite his exhaustion, I-Date walked into the shrine and placed the blue Ryuko jewel on the prepared pedestal before falling on his back with a smile on his face. Well done I-Date, you've made me and the members of the Wasabi clan very proud of you said Jirocho as he approached Idate while smiling. I gave you my word that you could rely on me boss, that also went for Naruto and the others too since they helped me come all this way, said Idate. Very well said my boy, well go on there waiting for you since it's your day after all, later Idate stood on top of a small wooden platform and everyone was cheering for him, Naruto, Hinata and Sakura had arrived a few minutes ago and were smiling as they watched. And the winner is I-Date Marino, representative of the Wasabi clan, said the judge. Hold on, everyone turned to see Kyoraku along with an elderly man whom is one of the chief counselors. What is it? asked Jirocho. It appears that the kid was carried by a group of hired ninja and that goes against the rules, and I have proof, Kyoraku took out a photograph to show Naruto and the girls carrying I-Date from the shores of the beach. Then the chief counselor spoke up, they have to make it here by their own strength, those are the rules of this race so the boy must be disqualified. Which means that Fukusk of the Wagarashi is the winner, Naruto scowled upon hearing what they said, that can't be right, I never heard of such a rule, did you Sakurakan? No I didn't, I haven't read anything like that from the rule book, said Sakura with a frown. Those bastards, they're trying to find a way to cheat despite their loss said Kurama angrily. Such behavior goes against all aspects of honor in any kind of competition, said Chinami. I date attempted to explain, wait a minute, that's because I. I won't hear any excuses from you boy, Jirocho you gave your own that upon losing the race that the Wasabi clan will be disbanded, said the chief counselor with a smirk. Now wait just a minute, there was no such rule so stop talking nonsense, a man in regal clothing strode up to them with a frown on his face. But my lord. But the district leader cut him off, but what? Are you suggesting that I allow the Wagarashi simply because you wish it? No of course not, perhaps the reason you wanted them to win was because it would be the end to all the bribes you've been accepting, look here, the district leader took out a photograph to show the chief counselor receiving gold bars in his parlor, the said person paled in fear upon seeing the picture, you ignoramus. You'll give up your position and don a monk's robe. Yea sir, and as for you Kyoraku, Kyoraku backed up in fear, yes? I've heard a great deal about the evil deeds you've committed, your crimes against the people of Port Degarashi are unforgivable. From this day forward the Wagarashi clan is no more, is that clear? Kyoraku slumped over in despair, yes sir. Looks like karma finally caught up with them, Naruto smirked, ho 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 an auspicious day. We will now consider this matter ended, said the district leader and the crowd cheered far more loudly than before upon hearing such great news. Later that day at sunset, Naruto and the girls were standing at the port with Jirocho and Idate seeing them off. I really want to thank you for all for your help, said Idate. Don't mention it. I was happy to help despite the rough start we had, Naruto smirked. 
I hope that we would meet again, said Jirocho. Of course Jirokosan, should any help be needed will always be willing to assist, said Hinata. Naruto. If you see my brother. Could you tell him that I'm all right and I finally understood what the tenth question meant, asked Idate. Sure thing, in fact I even have something better in mind, Naruto reached into his ninja pouch and took out a small scroll and gave it to him, take this, and you can send a message once I've given Ibiki the other one, thanks Naruto, Idate smiled. Naruto jumped off the dock and landed on top of the water, then he bit his thumb hard enough to draw blood before performing some hand signs and slamming his right palm on the water's surface. Summoning Jutsu There was a puff of smoke before it faded to reveal Tylamon again on in the water much to the awe of the people around. Ah Naratosan, I can see that your mission was successful, said Tylamon. You're right, and you could give us another ride to the other side, said Naruto. Of course, I'm always ready to do so, said Tylamon. After getting on top of the Digimon's back, Naruto Sakura and Hinata waved goodbye to their new friends as they left the port in direction of the Hidden Leaf Village. Phew, this mission was really something to experience, said Naruto as he laid back. You're right but because of that you recovered the Raijin, said Sakura. Yeah, I bet Hokagejiji and Granny Tsunade would be happy to see it again, Naruto-kun, I just received a message from Fusan and Inosan that the latest Princess Gale movie will be premiering next week, Hinata looked up from her trend scroll to see Naruto and Sakura being excited. The next Princess Gale movie is coming up soon. I was wondering when they'll bring out the next one, said Naruto. Me too, let's bring the others along to the cinema when the movie comes out, said Sakura. Be sure to tell the Digimon and I about the movie when you watch it, said Tylamon with a small chuckle. With all that is said, the group continued on their way across the sea towards home with no incident whatsoever. That has to be one of the best Princess Gale movies I've ever watched so far, said Fu happily as she walked out of the cinema along with Naruto, Sakura, Haku, Hinata and Ino. Naruto had invited the girls to watching the premiere of the latest Princess Gale movie with him, they agreed without a second and had even arrived thirty minutes before the show even started. You're right Fuchan, despite it being just a movie I was totally blown away especially with that finishing move of theirs, said Naruto with Haku giggling at his excitement. You know I wish the movie had gone on a bit longer, I could have watched that handsome Mishi who played Suki Akuro all day long, said Sakura. Then she noticed Naruto looking a bit upset before giving him a hug and kissing in the lips, of course he doesn't compare to you Naruto-kun, this instantly cheered up the blonde. I have to wonder who does her wardrobe, I could definitely use some information on where she gets her clothes from, said Ino. If I don't know any better, Princess Gale is almost like a female version of Naruto-kun, said Haku. Really, how? asked Naruto curiously. You both hate to give and are very protective of the people close to you, she's right, Naruto-kun, you both share the same ideals, said Hinata, making Naruto rub the back of his head sheepishly. Maybe so, you know if Princess Gale was to show up right before us, would totally ask for her autograph, said Naruto. I would have asked you to do that Narakan, said Kurama having developed an interest in movies thanks to Naruto's recent habit on going on movie marathons. The group had reached a junction and were about to cross, when a white horse galloping at high speed passed by right in front of them, but it was the rider who really caught their attention. It was a woman with long black hair with bangs that swept on each side of her face which was shown to have makeup like pink eye shadow and red lipstick. She wore a green blouse over a pink jacket with brown gloves. Am I in a genjutsu or did we just see Princess Gale pass by us just now? asked Naruto with a look of disbelief. No you didn't Naruto-kun, it really was her, said Fu excitedly. Let's go after her and get her autograph, said Chomei who was just as excited. At that moment, a group of horsemen wearing grey armor and wielding weapons passed by in the same direction that Princess Gale went. You don't think that they're going after Princess Gale do you? asked Ino worriedly. Hinata activated her Byakugan and was silent for a few seconds before speaking up, they are pursuing her. Then it's obvious what we need to do, 
said Haku as she adjusted her battle kimono, let's go save an actress, said Naruto took off as he leapt from roof to roof with the girls following close behind. Princess was currently racing along the streets with the armored men slowly catching up with her, one of the horsemen split off from the group and ran down an alley to who knows where. The princess went round a corner when the very same horseman appeared right in the middle of the road and blocked, the man threw a net towards her but then several shuriken flew through the air and sliced them to bits. Everyone looked up to see a tan-skinned girl with lime green actually flying above them with what appears to be large beetle wings fluttering quickly. You leave the princess alone you meanies. Fu opened her mouth as yellow sparkling particles came out and fell on them before flashing rather brightly, causing the horsemen to flail around blindly then they heard a voice which sounded very close to them. I apologize for this, then they felt pinpricks on several parts of their bodies that had gaps in their armor before a sensation of numbness and paralysis took over and fell off their horses, they could barely lift their heads to see a black-haired girl wearing a red and green battle kimono who looked at them apologetically. Elsewhere, Princess Gale rode down a long flight of stairs with the remaining horsemen in pursuit now led by a grey-haired man with a short ponytail and wearing a pair of sunglasses. Two of the pursuing riders threw two bottles of slick oil ahead of her which broke to spread the contents out. The princess too late to avoid the oil as her horse slipped and fell to the ground which threw her off in the process. Get her, the man shouted, the horsemen leapt off their rides and pounced on Princess Gale in a dog pile to prevent her escape, we finally captured her, the man smiled with satisfaction. Suddenly the Princess Gale disappeared in a puff of smoke to reveal a pink-haired girl in her place as she kicked and punched the assailants away from her, the next thing the man knew was that he felt a heavy blow at the back of head before falling unconscious. The men turned around to see a blue-haired girl standing next to their unconscious leader with another blonde-haired girl which triggered them to run in fear, however someone stood in their way who happened to be a very displeased Pinquette. Shanaro. Next thing they knew was that they were all tied up and stripped of their weapons and armor. What do you girls think you're doing? A voice spoke up from above, they all turned to see Kakashi squatting on a stone lamp post with Sasuke next to him. Kakashi Sensei, these men was chasing the princess so we stopped them, said Ino. Humph, Sasuke simply snorted, then Kakashi body flickered forward and appeared amongst them as the ropes were cut, free the men much to the girl's surprise and confusion. I'm really sorry about this, said Kakashi while helping the man up from the ground. What's going on here, asked Sakura confusedly. Then Anko showed up with a body flicker, not to worry girls, I'll explain everything and then we'll go look for Narutakun and the actress, elsewhere, Princess Gale was sitting on the bank of a lake where her horse drank with a solemn look on her face, she heard someone land nearby and turned to see that it was a young blonde with spiky hair and whisker marks on the cheeks and also a headband to signify that he is a ninja. Are you okay princess? You don't have to worry about those guys who were chasing you earlier before any more, my friends and I took care of them, said Naruto with a foxy grin, you know, I'm a big fan of your movies and so are my friends, so I was hoping that you would sign my woa. Naruto jumped out of the way as she had gotten on her horse and was riding away from him much to his confusion. What's with the silent treatment? Might as well go after her just to make sure that no one else comes after her, Naruto held out the bracelet as he channeled Chakra into it, ride the wing road, then he summoned the air treks and skated after her. So let me get this straight, Narutakun, Fuchan, Sasuksen and I have been assigned for an escort mission. But what about Hinatakan and Kiran Izensei? asked Sakura confusedly. She and said members had been led to the site where the movie crew had set up camp for the meantime. Lady Tsunade had assigned another mission for them along with Kiba and Shino, so it will be Kakashi and I that will be leading the mission, said Anko. Finally, I'm so glad that we're on a mission, said Fu happily. You're right Fuchan, it's been getting a bit boring with just training in the village, said Chomei. The grey-haired man stepped forward and bowed in greeting, I would like to introduce myself, my name is Sandeu Asama and I am the assistant of Yuki Fujikase whom you know as Princess Gale, then he gestured to an elderly man with small squinted eyes behind a pair of blue glasses and wearing a brown sitting on a chair next to him, and this is Mr. Makino, 
the film director, nice to meet you and I gotta say that you leaf ninjas are really something, you took care of those stuntmen turned. Bodyguards we hired like it was just a walk in the park, and those were some big boys too, said Makino. Why thank you, said Kakashi with an eye smile. Concerning the escort, the next Princess Gale movie is the first one that we're shooting abroad, and I don't need to tell you that the leading actress is a bit of a diva, said an orange-haired man who happened to be the co-director. The three men appeared, and when the girls saw them they could barely contain their squeals of excitement. It's Mishi, Kin, and Hitero. The co-actors of Princess Gale, said Fu. Hurry up and get their autograph, shouted Chomei excitedly. Nice to meet you, we'll be going to a place called the Rainbow Glaciers which is our final destination, said Kin. And that's where we'll shoot the scenes for the movie's big climatic ending, said Hitero. But isn't the Land of Snow is pretty far place for you to shoot a movie, asked Sasuke. Sandeya recommended it, he said that this rainbow glacier turned seven colors during the springtime, said the co-director. No that's just an old legend, the truth is that there isn't any spring in the land of snow, said Kakashi. Does that mean that it's winter all year long, asked Sakura. Brrr, sounds like the people there never get to even put on summer clothes, Fu shivered at the thought of it. I remember that you went to the land of snow before, so I just that this would be the second time that you're going, said Anko. Yeah but it was a long time ago, said Kakashi with a shrug. I'm kinda curious to ask about Yuki, she sounds a lot different from the movies that we see her act in, said Sakura. The thing about her is. That she holds no belief in things like dreams and aspirations, said Mishi. But she's never been one to neglect her work, I don't know anything about her personal life and I don't need to as long as she giving her all when the camera is rolling, I don't have any complaints. Say what you will, but that woman is a born actress, that's true, and she only started to run away from the set after she heard we were going to the land of snow, said the co-director. But first things first, we need to find her in order to continue the mission, said Kakashi. During the chase, Narutakun had gone after Yuki and I'm sure is still near her, said Sakura. In that case, I'll send a message to him through the trans scroll to tell him about the mission and he'll tell us where they are, said Anko before taking out the said scroll and proceeded to write on it. So that's what's going on, we have an escort mission to the land of snow, said Naruto as he read the message on the trans scroll as he stood from a rooftop with the sun setting, he had been watching Yuki from a distance as she seems to always try to lose him in any way she can. Maybe so, but I don't like her attitude in the least bit, said Kurama with a frown, they had seen the actress treated the children badly when they approached her for an autograph and that gave them a bad impression especially since Kurama sensed a lot of negativity in her. Well we need to uphold our mission, so I guess we should bear with it, after sending a message of his location, Naruto jumped off the roof and walked towards a bar where he had followed Yuki to and went inside, there he found her drinking sake like there is no tomorrow. She raised the cup to her lips and was about to drink when it was suddenly snatched out of her hands, she turned to see that it was the same annoying blonde who had been following her all day. I think you've had enough, I know because I have a godmother who can take in way more than you, said Naruto placing the cup on the counter. I know when I've had enough, and why do you keep following me, asked Yuki rather drunkenly. Apparently I'm one of the ninjas hired to escort you to the land of snow, said Naruto. Well you've been hired for the wrong job because I'm not going to the land of snow, Miss Yuki. At that moment Sandeu and the rest of his team arrived at the bar, our boat to the land of snow is about to set sail, please we don't have much time, no thank you, as a matter of fact I'm bowing out as the princess, said Yuki much to the shock of everyone around San Sasuke. What are you talking about? It's no big deal, lead actresses change from sequel to sequel all the time with the same going for directors, that's enough. Listen to me, there's nobody in the whole planet who can play Princess Gale other than you, said Sandeu rather sternly, if you pull out this late in the game, then there's no way you'll ever be able to work in this business. Again, so who cares, said Yuki nonchalantly. Everyone was silent until Naruto spoke up, I hate to do this but there's no other choice, 
he walked forward and placed two fingers on a certain point of her neck before applying little pressure to knock her out and Kakashi was there to catch her before she fell. Afterwards they all left the bar in direction of the ship to take them to the land of snow. It was a fine day as the ship sailed through the sea, Naruto and the others watched as the filming crew carried around various props and operated a crane to lift much heavier loads around in preparation for the uptake of the next scene. So is there any details I should know about the mission Kakashi ni? asked Naruto. Kakashi looked up from his orange book to reply, well, what I haven't mentioned was that this mission is an ranked mission, an ranked mission? I don't see how watching over a spoilt actress would pose that much of a difficulty, said Sasuke skeptically. There's a reason for that, big celebrities tend to be targeted for ransom among other things, said Anko. So in the meantime, it's best that we keep our guard up, said Kakashi. Okay Kakashi ni, Naruto nodded in affirmation. Then they watched the director supervise a scene whereby Princess Gale grieves over the apparent death of her close friend and partner Shishimaru and were quite impressed with her acting skills, although there was a minor mistake where Yuki had forgotten to put teardrops for the scene so they had to restart but aside from that, nothing out of the ordinary. The next morning, the co-director came bursting through the door into Makino's quarters while looking distressed. Mr. Makino, we have a problem. The yelling was enough to wake everyone on the ship as they all gathered up on deck and were surprised upon what was the very first that they were seeing this early morning. Before the ship was a very large iceberg which is almost the size of a miniature island, what is that? asked Makino pretty voicing much voicing a similar thought shared by the people around. When I woke up this morning, I found this waiting for me. We can't get through, what are we going to do? asked the co-director worriedly. Makino looked deep in thought for a moment then his eyes widened behind his glasses as an ingenious idea came across his mind. This is it. We're changing everything, he yelled out. Huh, the co-director along with the others were a bit confused. You moron. Look, we're standing on the perfect spot to shoot, it's practically begging for us to film here. Huh what? Cherish this moment, the movie gods are smiling down on us. Everyone prepare to embark, said Makino as he turned to the rest of the filming crew. A droopy-eyed Naruto and Fu stood around a heater with Yuki to keep warm as all three let out a yawn at the same time. A couple minutes later, Everyone took their positions as the next scene was about to be recorded. All right people. We're gonna roll so stand by, said the co-director, okay. Scene 36, cut 22. Action. Ha, 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 ha. So princess, you've finally arrived. Well done, declared a man dressed in a purple, white and gold robe while wearing a matching hat with a long feather attached to each side and wielding a two-pronged spear, who is obviously the villain in the movie. It's you, Mao. Yuki put up her guard along with her co-actors. Princess, please stay back, said Mishi acting as Sukiyakuro. We'll take care of him for you, said Kin acting as Brit. The villain however scoffed, did you honestly believe that these meager fools would be a match for me prince? Then he performed an action as if launching a long-range attack when an unknown explosion above him much to his and everyone else's surprise, what's going on? Is this part of the script? It turns out that Kakashi was standing in front of the actors with an arm stretched out to signify that he must have thrown an explosive while Anko stood next to him with a pair of kanai in hand. Hey what are you doing? shouted the co-director. Naruto frowned a bit as he channeled chakra throughout his body knowing full well that both Jounins wouldn't be doing this for no reason. Everyone get back, shouted Kakashi. Everyone get ready, we've got enemies ahead of us, said Naruto, the others upon hearing what he said took a kunai in preparation. At the sight of the explosion, something burst out from underneath the snow. It was a man with a long purple ponytail running down his back while wearing a mask-style forehead protector that frames his face, a blue and white ninja outfit as well as grey armor on his left shoulder which connects to a gauntlet on his right hand as well as other places. Welcome friends to the land of snow, said the man. Kakashi's eye widened in surprise as he recognized him, it's you, 
then he looked to the left to see another standing on top of a cliff. She was a woman with pink spiky hair which stick out of the two holes of her helmet-like forehead protector like two pigtails and was also wearing armor similar to the man except that she has a wing-like backpack, greetings Princess Koyuki, I do hope that you're still carrying around the hex crystal, Kakashi was again surprised as he turned to look at Yuki whom they called a princess, Princess Koyuki? You know of her Kakashi? asked Anko. Is there ever a mission we would go on that doesn't have any unexpected reveals like this? said Sakura. Can't say for sure Sakurakan, said Naruto. Makes me glad that I came along, said Fu. Then someone appeared from their left, he was a large man with a short crop of purple hair as he also wears the same blue and white outfit, and similar except that he has a large metal arm attached to his left with a foldable red and purple snowboard, you're as good as they say Kakashi Hataki in Enko Midarashi, unfortunately it's not good enough, Naruto you and the others should. Protect Yuki while Anko and I handle them. Everyone get back to the ship. Kakashi commanded. Fubuki, Mizor, I'll leave the princess to you, the man jumped off his perch. Very well then, said the woman named Fubuki before jumping off hers as well. Music start, Dissidia, Final Fantasy, those who fight further, FFV, Kakashi and Anko dashed forward and met the leader halfway before squaring off for the incoming fight. It's been a long time Kakashi, hope you're not planning to run away like the last time, said the man. Nadar Ryoga, said Kakashi with a stern voice. Let's reminisce later and get down to business, said Anko the trio leapt at each other as Anko swung Kanai at Nadar, but the snow ninja deflected the slashes with his gauntlet, Kakashi was close behind with punches and kicks. Nadar ducked and weaved around them while retaliating with his own. Striking shadow snakes. Anko thrusts an arm forward as snakes shot out of her sleeves and towards Nadar, but when they drew close a purple dome appeared around Nadar and shredded the snakes much to their shock as Nadar simply smirked. This might make things a bit more troubling for us, Kakashi murmured. Meanwhile Naruto and the group immediately moved in to stand in front of Yuki and the other actors as they prepared for the enemy. Time for us to take the stage, so let's get this show on the road, said Naruto as he took a fighting stance. You do that while I handle the girl, said Sasuke then he ran towards Fubuki before Naruto could say otherwise. Darn it Sasuke, Naruto growled. Mizor took the snowboard of his back and unfolded it before dropping it on the ground, then he hopped onto it and suddenly shot forward with a burst of speed towards Naruto. The blonde dashed to the side and threw a handful of kanai at Mizor, however the projectiles shattered upon contact from a purple dome surrounding him. Mizor came around and made for the blonde once again. Flying Kick Naruto leapt into the air with his foot sticking out, Mizor raised his metal arm to block the attack with the clash resulting in a draw as they moved backwards away from each other. Fu performed a series of hand signs, water style, water whip. A thin stream of water shot out from the icy ground before Fu grabbed it and lashed it at Mizor but the water dispersed when it hit the purple dome as well, what's going on? It's like whatever we do keeps getting blocked by that barrier. Fuchan, there's chakra running through that armor of theirs which might be the source of that purple barrier, said Chome. This is going to cause serious problems if those armors can cancel ninjutsu, said Naruto, having heard what Chome said through the link. Ice style, Tsubame blizzard. Fubuki waved a hand as a cluster of ice and bon in the shape of miniature swallows were launched, Sasuke cartwheeled to the right to evade but the ice projectiles made a U-turn and aimed at him again. Fire style, fireball. Jutsu. Sasuke launched a continuous flamethrower to melt the ice then he took out a foldable windmill shuriken and threw it at her, but it shattered as well from the purple barrier, TCH, that armor is getting annoying, hurry back to the ship, quickly. Sakura shouted to the actors who immediately ran to safety. Except for Koyuki who simply stood there without moving a muscle, Yuki what are you doing? Run. Sandeu ran towards Yuki in an attempt to her, Princess. Yuki turned to her manger with a haunted look in her eyes. Ice style, ice prison. 
Fubuki placed a middle and index finger on the ground as large chunks of ice burst from the ground and headed towards Sasuke who was continuously jumping backwards before launching another flamethrower only for Fubuki to summon a chunk of ice to block the flames. Seeing those made Yuki tremble with fear as she fell on her knees much to the worry of Sandeu, Naruto turned and saw what was going on. Darn it, what's wrong with her, said Naruto. I'm sensing a large amount of fear from her, such emotions relays to trauma and it must have triggered from her seeing the flames, said Kurama. Naratosama, the enemy is attacking again, said Chinami. Naruto turned to his front to see Mizor leap at him with an incoming punch with the metal arm and immediately ducked under, but Mizor continued to punch and kick with Naruto dashing and somersaulting backwards to evade the strikes. Stand still you little brat. Mizor yelled, steam shot out of his metal arm as it sped towards Naruto. Whoa! Naruto hopped backwards a little as he sunk into the ground and appeared behind Mizor via teleportation, then he dashed forward and grabbed Mizor's head as he jumped before landing in a sitting position while driving his face into the ground to perform a one-handed bulldog, I'm sorry, can't seem to hear you so well with your face kissing the ground, he replied with a smirk. Keep that camera rolling even if it kills you, shouted Makino as the film crew were making their way to the ship while he supervises the camera recording the battle between the Kanoha ninjas and the Snow ninjas, show them the resolve of a cinematographer. But we'll need to live if we want the audience to watch this, said the co-director fearfully. Kakashi and Anko jumped away from Nadar with their backs to each other. Kakashi, what's up with that armor of theirs? My jutsu seemed to just bounce off them, said Anko. It's chakra armor created by ninja here in the land of snow, said Kakashi. You know of it? Yeah, but it's definitely a lot stronger than it used to be, Nadar landed nearby with an arrogant smirk on his face, so you remember. The armor increases the chakra within the body, strengthening a handful of the more useful jutsu. A chakra barrier surrounds us as well, able to deflect the chakra of our adversaries. As a result, ninjutsu and taijutsu are rendered useless, as I thought, said Kakashi. Nadar. Performed a pair hand signs, I style, dragon versus tiger. Kakashi performed hand seals of his own, water style, water dragon. Ice from the surroundings gathered around to form to form a giant tiger while the water from the sea took on the form of a serpentine dragon, both constructs let out a roar before charging at each other. However the ice tiger froze the water dragon entirely before shattering into pieces as Kakashi and Anko leapt out of the way before landing somewhere near Naruto and the others. Kakashi ni, if what they say about the armor is true then I'll need to bust out the hardware to turn this around, said Naruto. Naratosama, use the mobilates, said Chinami. Got it, everyone get close to me. Naruto shouted out to his teammates, they all heard his call and immediately moved towards him, okay, tag mode. Gokai change. Gokai akager. There was a flash of light and it faded to reveal Naruto and the others wearing helmet and outfit with a pirate motif and had grown a few inches but in different colors. Naruto was in red, Sakura was pink, Anko was yellow, Sasuke was blue, Fu was green, and Kakashi stood with them while in silver. This is the first time using any of your weapons Otuto, this will be fun, said Kakashi. Yeah well let's go, hit em hard, said Naruto as he charged towards Mizor with Fu by his side, Kakashi and Anko went after Nadar again, Sasuke went for Fubuki and Sakura stayed back to defend Sandeu and Yuki. What difference would it make if you're wearing a suit as well? Nadar taunted. A lot actually, let me show you, Kakashi took out his morpher which resembles a cell phone and flipped open the cover, then he pressed a button on the belt buckle to reveal a white ranger key for him to take out and inserting it into the morpher before closing the cover, Gokai change. De Ranger. His suit changed into one with a color scheme of white, gold and blue as the sound of a siren could be heard. I'm right behind you. Anko took out a yellow ranger key and inserted it into her morpher and twisted Gokai change. Zayu Uranger. Anko's suit changed into one with a motif of a saber-toothed tiger. 
as if changing forms will do anything. Ice Style, Dragon vs. Tiger Nadar launched the Ice Tiger towards them again. Fireball Attack Kakashi grabbed the throttle on the wrist-mounted device and revved it twice before holding his hands close together to form a highly concentrated energy ball before firing it at the Ice Tiger which destroyed it and kept on going to who knows where much to the shock of Nadar. But how, he didn't have time to think as Anko was already upon him and attacking relentlessly. Saber daggers, she summoned a pair of yellow short-bladed daggers, she rapidly stabbed and slashed at Nadar who was on the defensive. Then she threw one of the daggers at him but Nadar dodged by quickly leaping into the air, however she smirked behind the helmet as she dashed forward. With the other power dagger glowing with yellow energy before lunging at him with a diagonal slash which actually sliced through the armor much to Nadar's shock as he landed on the ground with a hand on the wound. How is this possible, he yelled out in denial. High speed fist. From Kakashi's perspective, Everything seemed to move in slow motion before dashing towards Nadar and unleashed a barrage of rapid punches before stepping forward and dealing a straight punch to send him flying into an ice wall with the chakra armor dented all over as time returned to normal. Naruto and Fu were charging at Mazor who was riding on his snowboard towards them, Fu-chan, let's double team him, said as he took out his morpher and a red ranger key. You got it Naruto-kun. Fu took out hers and a white ranger key. Both inserted their keys and twisted before calling out, Gokai change. Geo Ranger. Naruto transforms into a ranger with a lion's motif and golden claws on his gloves, and Fu transformed into a white suit with a tiger's motif and golden claws on her gloves as well. Why you little brats? Mizor lunged at Naruto with a straight punch of his metal arm only for Naruto to catch it before catching the second one with little trouble. Fu went behind Mizor and performed a leg sweep to knock him to the ground, then she grabbed him with one clawed hand as Naruto did the same on the other side. Together they started to run on all fours like beasts while dragging Mizor along the ground before tossing him away looking battered. Lion Fong Naruto summoned the red lion-themed gauntlet to his left hand. Tiger Baton Fu summoned the white tiger-themed baton in hand. Damn you! Mizor got back up and aimed the metal arm at them before firing a retractable cable arm. Naruto quickly darted to the side and used the lion fong to grab the cable. Get over here! Naruto pulled on the cable hard enough to draw Mizor towards them. Fu stepped forward with the tiger baton at the ready, take this, then she swung to hit the side of his head hard enough to send him flying in direction of Sakura, it's your turn Sakurakan. Sakura immediately moved in to intercept, got it, Gokai change. Maya Geranger. Sakura changed into a pink suit with a short cape and a butterfly motif, Magipunch, a pair of red boxing gloves appeared in her hands, Sakura reared a fist back as Mazor drew close, Shanaru then she thrust it into his gut which sent him flying away and crashing into a cliff wall. Sasuke was currently using his Gokai gun to fire at Fubuki who was darting left and right to evade the incoming energy projectiles. Ice style, Tsubame blizzard, the snow kunoichi fired another salvo of ice swallows towards the Uchiha. Achen, Gokai change. Sasuke took out a blue ranger key from his belt buckle and inserted into the morpher before twisting, Bukukenginger. Then he transformed into a ranger with a color scheme of blue and white, blow. Knuckle, then he summoned a blue gauntlet resembling a jet turbine to appear in his left hand. Sasuke activated the weapon as it blasted a strong gust of wind which blew away the icy projectiles away and knocked Fubuki backwards. Lucky shot, ice style ice prison, she launched chunks of ice in his direction. Sasuke pointed the blown knuckle to the ground and fired another gust of wind to launch him high into the air and out of the range of the attack, Servi Buster, he drew out a sidearm in gun mode from his belt and fired lasers at Fubuki with a few managing to break through the ice barrier which she had formed around her and inflicted a lot of damage on her, Servi Blade. Then he twisted the handle straight which then folded out a blade before descending with a vertical slash. Fubuki's eyes widened at the incoming attack, 
she jumped away as the pack opened up for the wings to unfold before flying high into the air and from Sasuke who frowned behind his helmet. Humph dot coward, Sasuke muttered under his breath. Nadar groaned in pain as he stood up from the ground and glared at Kakashi and Anko, I don't know how you were able to bypass the power of our armor, but this fight is far from over. Mizor and Fubuki, we're retreating. Ice style, white whale jutsu. The ground began to shake violently as a long narwhal horn burst out in between them before revealing a humongous whale made entirely out of ice then it started to fall towards Kakashi and Anko as they quickly hightailed it out of then before reverting to their base forms, Gokager. In that case, we might as well do the same thing. Everyone back to the ship, said Kakashi, Naruto, and the others quickly carried Sandeu and an unconscious Yuki if that's really her name back to the ship as it sailed away from the iceberg. Music end, uh, and C-U-U-U-T. Makino shouted out before the crew stopped recording. That has to be one of the most amazing scenes we've ever recorded in our lives, the co-director said in awe. You're right, but I have the feeling that we haven't seen anything yet, Makino said this with a twinkle in his eyes. On the other side of the ship's deck, the suits had disappeared after its usage and Sandeu carried Yuki back to her quarters to rest, leaving the Kanoha ninjas to speak among themselves. Kakashini, it seems like you know that Nadar guy and Yuki much more than we thought, care to tell us about it? asked Naruto with a quirked eyebrow. I will, but we'll need to gather everyone to talk about it. I get the feeling that some of the things I know might link with them. I gotta admit that those weapons of yours are very power, makes me feel a bit jealous, said Kakashi with an eye smile. Then maybe you should start dragging me along on your missions to get a chance to use them again, said Naruto with a smirk. It was a lot of fun too, said Fu excitedly as she hugged Naruto from behind, the boy blushed a bit as he felt two soft mounds pressing against. His back, turning him into a stuttering mess as the girls around and within giggled at his awkward moment. Naratosama, I need to tell you that the bracelet has awakened a new power, said Chinami. Naruto raised his hand to look at the bracelet and was surprised to see five small silver rings attached to it. He took a hold of one which suddenly glowed before coming off the bracelet and he noticed that he could latch it back again the same way. What are these rings about, Chinamazon, thought Naruto. I'll explain later Naratosama, for now you should rest before we learn of what Kakashizan and hopefully Sandeu will explain to us, said Chinami. She's right Narakan, we've had enough excitement for today, said Kurama. Okay then, Naruto walked towards his quarters to rest for the journey as well as the potential dangers ahead of them. After the battle with the snow ninjas on the giant iceberg, the Kanoha ninjas and the filming crew continued on their route to the land of snow, there was a bit of tension between the film crew members although Mr. Makino the film director was quite happy with himself for recording an actual battle between ninjas on camera. At the moment, Kakashi was currently in Yuki's sleeping quarters watching her deep in slumber, he then turned his attention to the item in his hand which happens to be a hexagonal, purple stick with indent at the bottom while the top has a key hook with a string to make it a necklace. Ten years that it's been a long time since I last seen you thought Kakashi as he looked at the sleeping girl, then the door opened to reveal Sandeu behind it. The ship pulled into the dock a moment ago, said Sandeu. Okay then, I'll be right over, Kakashi before placing the necklace on the table and walking with Sandeu out of the room and towards the room where his team, Mr. Makino and his co-director were waiting for them, while outside the filming crew were taking out their equipment and modes of transportation which were trucks with skis in place of tires in order to move on the snow. So you met on of those snow ninjas some time ago and who Yuki really is, Kakashini? asked Naruto as he sat in between Sakura and Fu with Sasuke at the far side of the table, while Mr. Makino, the co-director and Sandeu sat at the other side with Kakashi and Enko choosing to stand. You're right about that, which leaves me to ask, Kakashi turned to Sandeu with everyone else doing the same, you've known about this all along Sandeu, haven't you? Sandeu nodded in confirmation, yes, didn't you ever consider the risks of what might happen if she ever came back to the land of snow? You're right of course dot but this was the only way I could think to get the princess to return home, 
So you mean to tell us that Yuki is a bona fide princess and not the one as an actress? asked Sakura. That's right, Yuki Fujikase is only an alias. We're actually guarding Princess Koyuki Kazahana, the rightful heir to the Land of Snow's throne, said Kakashi, much to the shock of everyone present San Sandeu. Well, there's another record for my resume, said Anko with a low whistle. I first met her a long time ago, I was her aide when she was still a little girl that I don't blame her for not remembering as it was years ago, said Sandeu. Then that means you were also from the Land of Snow, said Sasuke. You're right Sasuksen, I served the princess's father, the former leader of the clan Lord Sosetsu Kazahana. The Land of Snow was not a large nation, but served as a haven of peace. Lord Sosetsu, he absolutely adored the princess. Ah, those were idyllic times, Sandeu smiled in nostalgia before his expression changed into anger, but ten years ago, on that cursed day. Lord Sosetsu's younger brother Doto hired a group of snow ninjas and instigated a revolt at IT was a coup d'etat. The magnificent Kazahana castle burnt to the ground and I feared that the princess had perished as well, Kakashi was the next to speak up, it was during that time when I was in the land of snow when I rescued Princess Koyuki, but I knew that there was no way we could defeat them. We had to keep running that we had to get away, this is worse than when Gato took over the land of waves, said Naruto with a frown. We've heard about that during our travels, then we heard that Gato was overthrown and the land of waves rose back to prosperity again, they even named their newly constructed bridge, the Great Naruto Bridge. I bet you and your team were involved in it, said Makino while smirking at Naruto who rubbed the back of his head. The day that I discovered that our princess was alive, I was practically beside myself with joy that she was alive after all these years. Sandeu sobbed loudly with everyone watching on with looks of understanding. The people in the land of snow must have truly loved the former lord and his daughter, said Karama with a smile. It is a testimony to how well he ruled over the country, said Chinami. I should have died back then, everyone turned their heads to see Koyuki leaning against the open door with a frown on her face. You mustn't say such things princess, we feared the worst that you can't imagine how frantic we were. We never stopped praying for your life, said Sandeu. I'm alive dot but my heart is dead. After that day, any tears I had left dried up, said Koyuki. Sandeu wiped the tears from his eyes with a handkerchief and continued to talk, and that's how I became the manager for Yuki Fujikes, I had bided my time waiting for the day I could escort her back to the land of snow, so what are you saying then, that all of this time you had just be using us, asked the co-director, looking betrayed while Makino remained silent. I apologize for deceiving you dot but it was for the sake of the land of snow's people, Sandeu got off his seat and approached Koyuki before going on his hands and knees, Princess Koyuki. Confront Doto and assume your rightful place as the leader of our land. I will sacrifice my life without hesitation in order to protect you. I beg of you, take up arms and lead your people. Everyone was silent as they waited for a response from Koyuki, and they finally got one. That I don't think so, Sandeu looked up in shock while Naruto scowled, Kakashi took note of this and silently hoped that the blonde doesn't lash out even though it's eventual, you've got to be kidding, but princess, what about your people? I could care less about them just forget about them, but princess. Sandeu began but was interrupted. Will you give it up already? Don't be dumb. It doesn't matter what you do, you will never be rid of Doto okay? shouted Koyuki, Sandeu was about to cry again. Naruto got up from his seat and glared at Koyuki, what's the matter with you? Do you expect this Sandeuzen to just stand there and just watch his friends and family suffer like that? He's willing to throw his life away because he has complete faith in you, and yet here you are turning your back on him. If this is who you really are, then there's no point to protect someone who could care less for their own country. Koyuki glared right back at him, and what do you know? It's because of Dodo that my father was killed, how would you know how it feels to lose a parent? The Kanoha ninjas quickly glanced at Naruto with a worried look in their eyes with one thought in mind, oh no not those words again. How dare she say that to Narutakun? 
Only I could get out of this seal, I would smack her across the sea with my tails. Karama bellowed in rage. Karamasan, please calm, said Chinami placidly, despite being just as angry. Naruto's hair shadowed his eyes as he bowed his head, you're right, I wouldn't know how it feels to lose a parent to death. Koyuki smiled smugly thinking she was right, dot because mine died on the night I was born, but it quickly changed into shock along with everyone else as she looked into his blue eyes, unlike you who spent a long time together with your father, I never got to spend even a day with mine. But at least I didn't lose sight of who I really am unlike you. The room was silent, Makino, the co-director and Sandeu looked at Naruto in awe, Kakashi looked at the ceiling in sorrow at how Naruto never had the opportunity to be loved by a family, Anko, Sakura and Fu glared at Koyuki in anger at how she hurt the one they loved, Sasuke looked at Naruto while feeling a sense of kinship since they're both orphans, and Koyuki simply stood there not knowing whether to be angry or ashamed. As long as there is hope, one may dream, and with those dreams the future comes, said Makino, everyone looked at him in confusion, did I like it, it's the perfect theme for our new Princess Gale movie, but Mr. Makino, you're not really going to continue filming with everything that's happened are you? asked the co-director worriedly. The director simply smirked, I told you. The movie is evolving. Just think about it, how often do you get the chance to make a movie with a real princess? We're looking at a chance of a lifetime here, the co-director had a look of realization upon what Makino clarified, you're right, think of the buzz that even the making of will be a hit. We're sitting on a surefire blockbuster. Koyuki however protested against this, now wait just a minute. Unfortunately, there's only one course of action. Now that Dodo is on our trail, running isn't an option, said Kakashi. After that battle with those snow ninjas, they'll be sure to come at us more seriously, said Anko. I'll be looking forward to it, said Sasuke with a smirk. Stop joking around. Koyuki yelled angrily, the movies aren't like real life, there's no such thing as a happy ending in this world. Yes there is, if you're willing to fight for it. Makino responded, effectively silencing her. Normally under these circumstances, would head back to the village for a little bit of help, said Kakashi. But we've come too far and it would take too long for backup to arrive, so we'll just have to manage things on our own, said Naruto. Thank you all very much, Sandeu with gratitude. That's it then, we're going ahead with this picture, said Makino. And you can bet that this one will have a happy ending, the co-director was in agreement. You can count on us, said Fu excitedly. Ditto, said Chome. Koyuki simply watched them with a frown on her face. Later on, the group were traveling along the roads of the Land of Snow via the five customized trucks as they drove along the ledges of a tall snowy mountain and stopping before a cave opening, Naruto along with the co-director and a film crew member went to stand near the edge in order to take a leak. Our hideout is not far from here, it's just beyond this cave. Once we finish our shooting here, We'll pass through to the other side, said Sandeu. Okay then, but we mustn't let our guard down, said Kakashi. Of course, soon my people can rest easier as they'll have their princess back, that is if she's willing to cooperate, Anko snorted. Then they resumed the journey, driving through the long and dark tunnel. Wow, this tunnel is pretty long. I can't even see the exit, said Fu as she looks through the window. Once upon a time, there used to be a railroad ran through here, said Sandeu. A railroad? So you mean trains used to pass through here, asked Sakura. That's right, but it's covered up by pillars of ice by now. But if you dig deep enough, then you'll be able to find them, that's interesting, said Naruto. Naruto, I've been meaning to ask about what happened to the bracelet that it has five rings attached to it, asked Kakashi catching the interest of everyone around. I was told that the bracelet had awakened another power, it's called party mode, party mode, asked Fu curiously. Naruto reached for one of the rings which glowed. Before coming off the bracelet and held it out for them to see, Chinamazon told me that these rings are linked to the bracelet and have the power to summon a weapon to the wearer without requiring me to be nearby to use tag mode, 
you mean that we can call upon any weapon with one of those rings? Sounds pretty convenient, said Sasuke. Yeah, but there's a limit, you can only summon one weapon and the ring chooses for the bearer based on their battle style or the situation. I can also track where they are as well as communicate through them like radios, that's great and all Naruticon, but what if someone were to steal any of the rings? asked Anko. In that case, I can summon the rings back to the bracelet, said Naruto. So how does one use one of the rings? asked Sakura. All you have to do is channel chakra to the ring and call out, equip, to summon a weapon, Naruto replied before taking off the rest of the rings and handing each one to the team. A few minutes later, the trucks finally made it out of the tunnel and parked nearby for their next scene. Mr. Makino emerged from the leading truck as the film crew members were taking out their equipment for the recording. All right people, let's get this show on the road, said Makino. Suddenly the co-director burst out of the second truck and ran towards him with a look of distress, Mr. Makino, we've got a bit of a problem. What is it? Yuki has up and vanished again. What? Anko looked very annoyed, that girl is really getting on my nerves. I'll go and look for her, I should be able to track her, said Naruto. Okay Naruto, we'll remain here to guard the others, said Kakashi, Naruto nodded in affirmation before running back into the tunnel in search of the wayward princess. Koyuki was currently running through the snow-covered pine forest as fast as she could away from everyone, they can forget it, there's no way I'll be going back to that place. To that man. She stepped the snowy ground which turned out to be much deeper than expected, resulting in her tripping over and tumbling down a hill before sliding to a stop before closing her eyes upon losing consciousness. If you look closely, you'll see the future, a man's voice sounded in the darkness. I can't see anything, Koyuki's was heard, although it sounded much younger. Of course you can, when the spring comes that you will, the spring? Then Koyuki's adult voice was then heard, you're a liar father. There's no spring in this land, Koyuki slowly opened her eyes and then suddenly felt hot air blow through her hair and looked up only to let out a gasp of fear before scrambling backwards upon what she saw. It was a wolf covered in blue, white, and silver-colored fur about twice the size of a horse and there appears to be three strands of fur growing from the tip of its shoulders. Koyuki then saw someone stick their head over the wolf's head and instantly recognized who it was. Thanks for helping me find. Her Garuramon, said Naruto. It's no problem at all Naruto, said the wolf. Naruto? Who or what is that? asked Koyuki. This is one of my summons, his name is Garuramon. I summoned him to help me find you by tracking your scent all the way here. But seriously, how are you going to keep running away from your problems when they'll just keep coming after you until you decide to face them? asked Naruto with a quirked eyebrow. Humph, Koyuki turned away with a huff, causing Naruto to roll his eyes. Come on, everyone is waiting for us, with reluctance, Koyuki climbed onto Garuramon's back and wrapped her arms around Naruto's waist. Despite being annoyed by her attitude, he couldn't help but blush from feeling two soft mounds pressing against his back. At the moment, they were currently making their way back through the tunnel. Why do you always come looking for me? asked Koyuki. Because it's my mission to escort and protect you. So no matter how much you hate it and run away, rest assured that Garuramon and I will definitely find you, said Naruto. He's right, once I catch a whiff of your scent, there's no way that you can avoid me, said Garuramon. You can drag me back but I'm only going to act in front of the camera and that's it, said Koyuki. Heh, whatever you say, said Naruto with a smirk. Hutuit, they suddenly a sound echoing through the tunnel from behind them which was soon followed by the sounds of ice cracking, they turned to see two railroad lines parallel to each other appearing from behind and moving on ahead of them much to their confusion. Railroad lines? But I thought that they were frozen over like Sandeus and said, said Naruto. Outside the cave, everyone were surprised and confused when a pair of railroad lines appeared from the tunnel and into the mountain. What is that? asked Makino. Sandeya ran towards one of the railroad lines and knelt to examine it, its chakra, there's chakra running through the rails and melting the ice, 
his eyes suddenly widened in realization, it must be him. Everyone hurry, you must get out of here. You can't let them find you, it's not safe, then he proceeded to run up a snowy hill much to the confusion of everyone around except the Kanoha Jounins as they got the idea of what he meant. Sasuke, Sakura and Fu, get the crew to safety and out of sight. We have enemies inbound, said Kakashi. Roger Sensei, the three genins nodded in affirmation before proceeding with the task. Back in the tunnel, Naruto, Koyuki and Garuramon could see a bright light as well as the sound of metal as both drew closer to where they were. I think it's, a train, said Koyuki worriedly. In that case, if what you're saying is true, then we better get out of here. Garuramon let's move, said Naruto urgently. You got it. Garuramon turned and started running down the tunnel as quickly as he could. Hutuut, Koyuki looked over her shoulder and her eyes widened in fear as she saw a train with three blaring headlights running along both railroad lines in pursuit of them. Hurry, it's gaining on us, shouted Koyuki. Not we can help it. Naruto replied. We'll never make it. This isn't the time to be giving up. This is pointless, we're finished. Then you don't know me really well, I'd rather die giving it my all than die giving up. Garuramon shares the same ideal and is going to show just what I mean. Koyuki was stunned upon Naruto's declaration, come on Garuramon, run like the wind. Reawaya. Garuramon pumped energy throughout his body as it glowed with a blue aura, then his speed sharply increased and began to pull away from the speeding train as they drew close to the exit. That's it buddy, we're almost there, said Naruto with a smirk. They finally reached the end of the tunnel and Garuramon leapt away from the railway lines skid on the snowy ground before coming to a halt just moments before the train rushed past them. Naruto wiped the sweat from his face in relief before turning to look at Koyuki with a smirk. See what I mean when I told you that I would never give up, said Naruto with a foxy grin, one of the reasons why I pledged my loyalty to you, said Garuramon with a grin which exposed his fangs. Koyuki could only look at the blonde in surprise before realizing that her hands had wrapped around Naruto's chest and could feel the firm abs before letting go of him with a blush on her cheeks. They both got off Garuramon's back before turning to look at the train which had stopped not too far from where they stood. It's been a long time, Koyuki, a male voice was heard through a loudspeaker that was coming from the train. Koyuki's eyes widened in fear as she recognized the voice, I knew it. It's Dodo, said person was a brown haired man dressed a royal robes as he stood on the first cart with Nadar by his side while speaking through a microphone. It's been ten years. Come now, don't be shy, let's get a look at that face, said Dodo. Naruto moved to stand in between them with Garuramon by his side growling at him. I've heard about you as well, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The son of the fourth Hokage and Kanoha's weapon master, pleased to make your acquaintance, Gato II, Naruto responded sarcastically while Koyuki looked at him in shock of his family background and she wasn't the only one as the film crew members who in hiding and recording were just as surprised. He's the son of the famous Yellow Flash? So when he said those words that I've really gone too far back then, thought Koyuki. Before anything else could be, large rows of cut logs and waves of snow slid down the slope and slammed into the middle cart of the train. Everyone turned to see a platoon of men dressed in samurai armor and wielded swords and spears, among them was Sandeu also wearing armor. Sandeu spoke out in a loud voice, there you have it men, our beloved princess Koyuki is here to watch over. Us. With her at our side, victory is ours, the warriors roared out in affirmation of his declaration. Those must be some of the people who are rebelling against Doto, said Chinami. But what they're doing is practically suicide, they'll only get themselves killed, said Kurama. I'll make sure that doesn't happen, thought Naruto with the bracelet glowing, ready to summon a weapon. Hear me Doto. We've waited a long time for this day of reckoning to come, Sandeu Asama and fifteen loyal warriors stand before you to avenge our great fallen leader Lord Sosetsu. On this day, you will breathe no more, said Sandeu. 
Doto merely snorted in disgust, I thought you destroyed the last of the insurgents, my apologies, we'll get rid of them immediately, said Nadar. No with men such as these, there's little they can understand other than total annihilation, attack, with a battle cry, Sandeu led the men down the slope to attack Dodo. But at that moment, several compartments on the carts with snow ninjas manning turrets opened up and got ready to fire. Naruto's widened in realization of what's going to happen and took off running, I don't think so you bastard. Henshin. Henshin. In a flash of light, Naruto immediately flipped the horn on the belt to quickly transform into Kamen Rider Kabuto in the rider form instead of the default masked form. Change beetle, clock up, then he swiped the side of his belt. Clock up, then he disappeared from the sight of everyone watching, at that moment the snow ninjas fired a large volley of kanai at high speed straight at Sandeu and his men. However before any kanai got close to hit any of them, Something seemed to be deflecting each and every one of the deadly projectiles much to the shock of Doto and confusion of the warriors opposing him. Garuraman took this moment as an opportunity as he rushed forward in between them ice cannon, he opened his mouth to launch balls of ice to take out the snow ninjas that were manning the turrets then he turned toward Sandeu and his men ice wall, before breathing out frost to form a wall of ice hence barricading them. What are you doing? asked Sandeu. Stopping you from running to your death, what you're doing is noble but this act is simply martyr. If not for Naruto and I, you all would have been killed, said Garuraman angrily. Clock over, Naruto reappeared at the other side of the ice wall with the kanai gun with it in gun mode, he aimed the firearm at the train with energy charging up at the muzzle, avalanche shot. Then he pulled the trigger and fired a large white energy sphere which collided with one of the carts, resulting in an explosion with a large radius. The locomotive quickly detached from its carts in order to make its quick escape as Naruto watched it leave before deactivating the armor and returning to the others. By then, Kakashi and the others who had been getting ready to attack before Naruto's intervention appeared along. With the film crew as well. You crazy old fool, what you almost did was nothing more than suicide especially against Shinobi. Enko admonished the group angrily. She's right about that, and in front of the princess no less, Kakashi put in his two cents. Sandeo looked ashamed of himself, I truly apologize for all this, for putting my men in such danger, Naruto ran up to them in a haste, is everyone all right? Yeah, good thinking, using the ability of that armor to defend the men, said Kakashi with an eye smile. What would you expect from our Naruto-kun? Anko hugged the blonde from behind while rubbing her cheek against, causing the girls and surprisingly Koyuki to pout with jealously. I shouldn't have come after all, because of me you almost got yourselves killed, said Koyuki. Please don't blame yourself for this princess, said Sandeu. But then what, you wouldn't have attempted this if I wasn't here, would you? asked Koyuki angrily, Sandeu didn't have anything to say to this question. Before anything else could be said, a blimp rose from below the cliff behind them, Mazor was standing at the opening with his metal arm aiming at them before firing a retractable cable arm which managed to grab Koyuki by her robe before pulling her towards the blimp. Princess! Sandeu cried out in dismay. The Kanoha ninjas and Naruto's summon were about to move in to bring her back, when Fubuki flew by them and threw a handful of kanai with blue crystal orbs attached to them. Naruto and Sasuke threw several shuriken to deflect most of the kanai to land elsewhere and release torrents of ice spikes which rose with enough force to lift large amounts of earth off the ground. Damn it, they're getting away, said Enko angrily. I'll be going on ahead, Garuraman will stay with you guys in order to track me, said Naruto before biting his thumb to draw blood and perform several hand signs, summoning Jutsu. He slammed a palm on the floor then there was a puff of smoke before it cleared to reveal a giant bird with red feathers and a white head with a pair of gigantic horns growing from it. Hello Naruto, Garuraman, how may I help you? asked the bird. Hi there Aquilaman, I need your help to go after that blimp, said Naruto. As you wish, please climb on my back and we'll be on our way, said Aquilaman. Okay then, Naruto turned to the others, I meet up with you guys later. Okay Naruto-kun, please be careful, 
said Sakura with Naruto nodding in affirmation. Then he jumped onto Aquilaman's back before he took to the air and in pursuit of the blimp while thinking, I told you that I'll definitely come after you, Koyuki. So you better expect me to show up. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.